When a Stupid FPS Player Falls to Another World Volume 1 Story The protagonist is a player of a VMOPS game who ends up falling off the map while playing in PV mode, and ends up being transported to a fantasy world with his FPS system. That day, I repeated my daily habits, turning on the power to the game as soon as I got back from the company, the software started up. Virtual Reality Multiple Battlefield also known as VMB, a FPS game that I've continued to play for many years. An evolved first-person point of view, the long-awaited shooter game. A shooter game in a virtual reality world, naturally including PvP, you can experience various battlefields within the game, from solo to multiplayer pv. It's set in the near future. But you also get to play favorites like World War 1 and World War 2. There are many real gun models with possibilities to assemble your own. It's an online player monster title with more than 5 million players connected worldwide at all times. The game mode I'm currently addicted to is the solo content. This is a player versus monster type enemies, the enemy AI being very cunning with many of them having unpleasant behavior. In the stage Sky Garden that I'm currently attacking, I'm mapping the floating island with a power suit with enhanced physical abilities, and continuously moving from jump to jump but, there are a lot of hateful enemies that target me the instant I move. Phew. Finally about halfway, I let out a sigh of relief while on a large rock in the middle of the map, and operate the gauntlet on my left arm while leaning my back against it. I operate the half-transparent B5 size touch screen monitor, replenishing the ammunition of my equipment with the crystal points CP obtained so far. The primary weapon I'm using now is the H and K MP5A4, Germany's famed Heckler and Koch. The A4 and the MP5 series with a variety of variations, low recoil a high degree of accuracy with an easy to control development system. A burst fire function added to the model. The bullet is a 9 by 19 parabim bullet. Particles of light continue to appear and converge in front of my eyes when I select 4 magazines. It transformed into a black supply box in just a few seconds. I open the box and take out the magazines inside. The supplely box became particles of light again and disappeared. I put one of the removed magazines into the MP5A4, putting the rest on my magazine belt. VMB. A gun society of virtual reality and reality, for the sake of retaining even a little knowledge and effects of guns actual round reloading and etc are necessary, while the basic structure for handling is excluded. Therefore, as soon as a magazine is put in, and safety disengaged, it becomes possible to fire. All right, let's go. Getting up from the shadow of the rock, heading toward the next island with my power suit with enhanced leg strength, I jumped with a start dash beyond the speed of ordinary people. My head goggles showed the map information in my line of sight. Two signals indicating enemies were shown. I instantly changed my body posture in the jump, turning my body towards the incoming enemy. I simultaneously held the MP5A4 that was attached to the sling on my back and got into a hip firing stance turning the safety device into full auto. The crosshairs for the hip fire appeared on my head goggles. First pulling the trigger with one hand, then matching the crosshair with the enemy. Attacking the Sky Garden's aerial hunter the Sky Eagle. You can only assault these guys from the air. If you receive a blow in the air, you'll fall outside the map and die if you're unlucky and aren't able to head towards the island. From one hand to both when bullet spread increases, hip firing from the iron sight and down sight, bringing more accuracy from a higher state, I shot through one of the beast's eyes while in the air. Heading towards the island while turning sideways, another sky eagle came to assault, aiming at the opening of my landing in front of my eyes. I landed with the momentum and jumped again backwards. I fended off the assault and together shot through the heads of two beasts. Sweet. Hyping myself with what's become my favorite phrase, I take my landing while the sky eagle becomes particles of light and disappears. It can't be. Eh? 
You are neglecting to check my rear. I stupidly fell out of the map. New. Ah, with cold cheeks and the feeling of grass in the hand. I slowly open my eyes on a map different from the sky garden. Where is this? A hidden map? Usually you need to land on an island at the sky garden. If you fall outside of the map it should be an instant death and I should be transferred home. However I was asleep on grassland where a gentle breeze was felt. I've never heard about getting sent to a place like this. Wind? I watched my surroundings, even in the sky. There were no islands like in the sky garden. The clouds were moving like the grass. However, that is strange. There shouldn't be any elements like wind in VMB. Also, when I was lying idle on the ground a short while ago, my cheek was cold. I could feel the temperature. This isn't VMB? No, that's impossible. I checked my body in confusion in the uneasiness that this isn't a game. I had the MP5A4 which I used a while ago, three magazines on the belt, the sub-weapon on my waist, grenades, a knife, on my gauntlet of my left hand I had the tactical support system, short TSS, with a variety of functions. When deploying a screen monitor, the menu is displayed as always, however, when I try to open news or mails from the management an error is being displayed. The map function of the head goggles only indicates my position. Also the CP I saved until now. The shop function where I can purchase weapons, ammunition and equipment seems to work. I can also choose the support weapon summon function, too. I don't understand the reason why I can't contact anybody. Maybe it's because it's a hidden stage? For the time being, as it's a secret stage, maybe I can do something. I should try to advance. The VMB PVE mode in the stage rewards such as the CP and firearms which weren't acquirable in the shop. I was interested in them and got addicted in collecting them in that mode. Even if I say that, which direction should I go? While looking around at landmarks, I could not see a suggested goal for the map. I only knew the map directions reflected on my head goggles. Even if I look around, there is a forest in the north, mountains to the east and in the west and south only grassland. Well, seems like there is nothing to the west or south. Considering the map configuration of VMB there is no warfare in the mountains. I guess I should go north. Without information of the stage, I don't know where an enemy may appear from. Though enemies are displayed on the map as a red point. The information of an enemy can't be seen without exploring the map. I set the MP5A4 on my waist to the three shot burst mode. With the powered suit, which increased my leg strength, I started to jog towards the north. While approaching the forest, no enemy appeared till now. However, I saw something unexpected with my eyes. An insect? Huh? Though I did not notice while running through the grassy plain, when entering the tall woods, they seemed to be alive. In the world of VMB no insects existed. In Naturals maps, such as forests and grasslands only the player or enemies existed. There were no NPCs like harmless mob characters. It's not VMB after all. Then why am I here in this outfit or better said where is this place? There is nobody here who can answer my questions. My voice disappeared in the woods with the calming wind. I unintentionally grasped the grip of my MP5A4 to realize the rigid iron mass which weights only about 3 kilograms, but it feels heavier than that. Also the weight of my head goggles which I have never felt so far. I touch the switch on the ear pads of my orange head goggles, which feels real. The color of nature in my eyes, by all odds, was reality. When judging with naked eyes, and not with the goggles, I understood immediately that this isn't the game world of VMB. The TSS does not react at all when I try to log out. Without looking around too much, I still saw a figure approaching me which was walking unsteady. An enemy? Perhaps because you have the same appearance as in the game and because I believe the one moving towards me is an enemy, I hide behind a tree immediately, I use my goggles again and touch the ear pads, while my hand trembled a little. I look at the direction where it comes from. I try looking in front while leaning on the tree, 
A person? Is it a player? I saw three humanoid shapes about 200 meters away, but something is wrong. Why don't they have hair clothes? A loincloth? I can't see very well over the orange goggles. I raise the transparency of the goggles and adjust them to limit where I can still see the HUDs like the map. I move from tree to tree with a low posture. I repeatedly move while hiding and follow the three humanoids. Hey, isn't that a goblin? When I first watched them from 100 meters away I understood that they don't have human colored skin. They were green. They did not have any hair had enormous ears and were about 120 centimeters tall. All three had a club-like stick in the hand. By all odds that is not a human being. There never were such enemies in VMB and I never heard of them. I can only associate them with the name, Goblin. Where on earth have I come to and how can I return? A reality different from the reality I know is obviously shown. I was completely confused. I thought about this reality while chasing the goblins while hiding. Isn't this Earth? Isn't this that? Did I get teleported to another planet? Or is it more like time travel? No. 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 Goblins did not exist on Earth before. Then, where am I? Where is this place? Different from the reality and the virtual world. A different world. Another world? I liked games anime and novels. Frankly I enjoyed them without a big difference, but my favorite were FPS games. Transported to a different world. It couldn't be. I was playing a VO, weren't I? The fantasy-like theme of being transferred into a different world became a trend in recent light novels. I also read some of these. The VO genre was also used for these. I'm not playing a virtual reality shooter like VMB. I wonder if this is a virtual reality rebounds per game, a western fantasy rebounds per game world. The story of a hero transferred into a different world, wasn't I playing an FPS? Transferred to a world of sword and magic with a gun. No, I don't know if magic exists here. No, it's better to think there is. Others may have some projectile weapons. I should think how to deal with it. I continued chasing the goblins for about 30 minutes while muttering things like that. I heard sound of water flowing from the depths of the forest. No, I heard it falling. It saw a waterfall between the gap of the trees. There isn't much water, but there is a waterfall on a 10 meters high cliff. In front of the goblins three, three small animals were walking. They entered a hole that was in the waterfall. I wonder what I am doing. I pulled myself together while looking at them disappearing into the hole. Apparently, the three animals returned to their nest. Where is the place I can return to? I was not able to move. I did not know what I should do. Return to my old world? How and where can I return? Or should I live in this world? What should I do and where should I live? At that place I could only stare at the nest. How much time had passed since I started watching the cave. Before I had noticed it the sky had turned red and through my head goggles I could see multiple red points moving. These head goggles were flexible and had the potential to hide the head mounted display, HMD, and could also shield the eyeballs. In VR FPS you can view various types of information through the head goggles that you weren't able to see on the TV or monitor but it was all possible inside the game. The map information included both the armament and friend or foe identification displayed together. Also, to adjust the various environmental stages and combat conditions it can be changed to infrared thermography flow mode, TL, forward-looking infrared, or heat sensor to be accurate, as well as having a night vision NV mode. On top of that the rounded map display can reach a maximum radius of up to 150 meters. Then there is the sound sensor, which gathers every sound in range and indicates their location. Enemies are displayed in red on the VMB and allies are in blue. In the game you could tell if something was an enemy visually, or through a hostile action. Even though it had similar information automatically displayed as a red dot. This world wasn't a game. While the three goblins being pursued were marked as red dots on the map, the goblins were natives of this world. It was possible that they weren't enemies, 
though it was unthinkable that they were allies. The other side of the river, in order to identify one of the dots on the map, I move towards a position with better visibility and take cover behind a tree, that is, a goblin, multiple red dots, another group of goblins of the same height and size were spotted, however, one of them was wearing something different, a coat, similar to a hanton, and something like an obi was wrapped around it, unlike the other goblins, this one, had a long club in one hand. It looked like a magician or a shaman. These goblins were dragging something behind them. It looked like some type of livestock had been wrapped up in some cloth by the goblins and was being pulled along on a straw mat. A foot? Is that a person? The thin foot could be seen sticking out from the edge of the cloth the goblins were dragging. It looked more feminine than masculine. It seemed like some woman had been hunted down like a pig. Strange and inhuman voices could be heard as the group disappeared into the hole of their nest. What is this situation? I continued to watch the hole while trying to understand the situation, and begun to sink deeper into my thoughts. Though I should be in the virtual world of VMB, I could tell that I am actually in a completely different world. I found some goblins and a foot attached to what is probably a kidnapped person. Are they still alive? Was I brought here for some reason is it so that I can rescue that person? Unconsciously, strength flows into my grip. I can feel the mass of iron that is the MP5A4, a lethal weapon. Though it looks just like it does in VMB, whether this gun will actually shoot hasn't been confirmed yet. CP, Crystal Points, TSS tactical support system, and the shop all exist, but I haven't tried buying anything yet. There is no guarantee that I will be able to replenish my ammunition and equipment once used. If I can fire my weapon, and if I am able to replenish my ammo without any trouble, can I actually beat the goblins? Will 9x19 Parabem bullets be powerful enough? My head is filled with uneasiness and doubt. Before noticing it the sun had gone down and my surroundings were cloaked in the darkness of night. Let's go. At the least I will try and confirm if that person is alive and whether they can be saved. If bullets aren't effective, though I'll feel bad for the victim, I'll run away. With this I persuade myself, set the monitor for my head goggles to a night vision, device and turn on NV mode, moving in short intervals. I follow the goblins into the hole. This hole is larger than I had thought. Its height is roughly 3 meters and it's about 4 to 5 meters in width. I'm advancing towards the depths using zigzag movements. Inside this area of the cave there is a small shining flower growing. It's actually producing light. I've never heard of such a flower before. However, thanks to the NV mode functions, I can see everything clearly. The map on the head goggles is updating itself with the areas I've been to, but the sound sensor isn't currently showing anything. I am sure the sensor is working though. I can hear a strange voice through the headphones. I believe it's the sound of one of the goblins up ahead. It's coming closer. I think there are two of them. My hand instinctively touches the MP5A4. If it turns into a situation where I have to fire, even more enemies could be drawn by the sound of the shots, and I'm still not absolutely sure whether this weapon functions yet, which is bad. Without making any noise, I slowly withdraw a little and sling the MP5A4 onto my back using the shoulder strap. I pull a M1911A1 Colt Government, a sub-weapon, out from my waist holster. I also take out and attach a silencer from the pouch next to it, the M1911A1, designed by John Browning, developed and improved in the United States. It is the power to stop the movement of an enemy with just one shot. It's a handgun that uses large caliber bullets known as 45 ACP. In comparison, they're 3 mm larger than the 9x19 Parabem bullets. If these aren't enough to take down the goblins, then the MP5A4 wouldn't work either. The firing sound will be suppressed by the silencer. However there are demerits to it too. The drawbacks are that the balance, center of gravity, is harder to adjust in VMB. The accuracy drops, 
and power drops over long distances, dealing less damage to your opponent. The center of gravity is also decreased during hip fire. However, the reality is that I've fallen into another world. I can't be sure of the demerits here. All I can do is shoot and find out. I release the safety from the M1911A1 and confirm that the crosshair appears in my head goggles. I lean against a curve in the wall to hide myself while preparing a one-handed firing stance. I can use the NV mode to see clearly. But how well can the goblin see in this poor light? I suppress the exposure of my body as much as possible and lie in wait for the goblins. Goblins. I call them that. But are they really goblins? With one headshot it will die, without a cry of agony or a chance to fight back. What if they are the prime race of this world? I'd just be a murderer. I wonder what the state of the woman I saw is? I could at least confirm that and use it to decide if I need to be hostile. They've already done something quite cruel though. But maybe it isn't seen the same way here. After all I am pretty sure that this is a different world. My thoughts were going around in circles as I stare into the darkness. They've come, and as expected there are two. They are as large as children. You even now that they are in sight my heart is still agonizing over whether they are enemies or not. They have the face of a mob, easily recognizable as something to be shot. What is with that face? It looks like a monster's no matter how I try to look at it. With that thought a sound like something being crushed escaped two times. Without missing, two heads were pierced by my gunfire. The weapon had worked the same as in the game, and because of the silencer the shots hadn't made a noticeable sound. However, the silencer in VMB only silences enough sound of the shot and prevents it from being shown on the map of an enemy. It doesn't stop the sound of the empty shell falling onto the ground. After being shot the two fall to their backs. I slowly approach them while holding the M1911A1 and gaze at their faces. They definitely seem to be dead. It should also be possible to kill them with a headshot of the MP5A4. However, while continuing to holding the gun ready, I stay still and look at them closer. The ears are too big for their face. The nose extends outwards like an eagle's. The eyes are red, and its mouth is wide. The teeth visible inside their opened mouths look canine. Those guys, even if they are the native people, I could never get along with them. I killed these two, but I don't feel guilty at all. Is it because the face is too different from a human's? Will their corpses disappear? If they stay like this, will I be able to get CP? New questions are emerging as soon as old ones are resolved. Even if I beat an enemy, a crystal to gain CP doesn't appear. I've been watching the TSS and it isn't increasing either. If this continues I will be unable to resupply and will lose my only way of fighting. I froze my feet, as if they had spreading roots into the ground of the dark nest. Wouldn't move. If I continue to press forward and help that woman. I will be using up my limited supply of ammo. My feet refuse to advance any further. G N knew this. Where is this? I can't see the dim light of day nor the light from magic power. Is this the faint white light of the grass? Zero. G U U U J I T L N in raw. With those exact Latin characters, it's difficult to open my eyelids, and the floor is hard. It is painful sleeping here. I was awakened from unconsciousness quickly. Both hands and feet were tied down to something, and as both eyelids slowly opened, the rock wall of the cave could be seen. Other than that, there was nothing but the voices of more than one subrace audible in the background. Oh yeah. The seniors, some accomplished adventurers from Mayor Iraru village, and I were investigating around the West River area when something attacked us. I can't remember what happened before and after I blacked out. As for here, is this a nest of people? Becoming aware that I was rising. The sound of the sub-race moving was approaching. G As for the female, it is not in the sub-race. Goblin, goblins, which are the kind to have no other choice but kidnap females, 
designates the females of other races as that walking wombs in order to increase the population. It mainly carries off Protestant races and beast races, impregnates them, and increase the population. As for the child of goblin, from impregnation to childbirth takes about one month, and the newborn baby becomes the adult in one month. Their growth rate is quick and terrifying. With this propagation speed, if a nest hole is made and the female is enclosed inside, they reproduce at amazing speeds, to such extent that it sprinkles harm throughout the surrounding areas, and spreads rapidly. Because of that, when a goblin group that is moving in order to make the new nest hole is discovered, one must remove it rapidly. Adventurers have been issued numerous such requests from the guild in order to confirm the presence or absence of what hunting mist and burrows that may form from letting some escape a nest hole. Investigators are dispatched from the guild. This time one was found in a region that had not seen a goblin up until this point, and my investigator apprentice, who was sent to a survey after the stray goblin was subdued had been visited by two of the senior investigators. The riverside forests to the west of Mayor Iraru village were larger than expected, but in a short time, it had been divided to the seniors who formed two groups. While fascinated by the flow of the river, we were struck from behind, and then we fainted. I was brought to the goblin's burrow, no doubt, as for the purpose, responding to the footsteps coming up from behind. I was lying on the ground and watched slowly while looking back. Kaya, I unintentionally screamed. Immediately there was the face of a goblin just in front of mine. The face had thin, red, fish-like eyes. It opens its mouth, as if laughing, to show off its canine-like teeth. The saliva which drips from its mouth falls onto my body. I was intent on hitting it in the face as it approached, with both hands but they were involuntarily tied. Gah. The goblin that had approached opened its mouth that was lined with canines, raised a strange voice in order to sound more menacing, and swung the club it had in its hand. Cute. I instinctively averted my face and closed my eyes. Club it swung lowered towards me. Based on the inclination of the club, I was certain that by lowering my head, I would die from having my head crushed in the first blow. The moment that I thought so, it impacted directly behind my head. The club bounced on the back of my head and drummed it into the ground with a dull sound. The vibration is transmitted directly into my skull. Jaya, he missed. No, he missed on purpose. 1. The club was swung again, now just in front of my face. The earth was depressed by the strike, as the dust, soil and rubble struck my face. I could not open my eyes. Three times. The club was swung. I was hit repeatedly in the ground before me. The vibrations of it resound in my head. Goblins had a very cruel personality, and felt pleasure from tormenting the weak, turning them into their toys. Its presence, as well as its personality, is so evil. It can never coexist with races other than the sub-races, the species that exist only in order to constitute harm to people. It was a sub-race, the goblin. I'm in this state, to be killed by being these guys' sex slave or toy. Goblin that swung down the club, again and again, slammed the club into the ground. I was trembling with fear each time the vibrations resonate in the ground to my head. In addition to the goblin across to me. There were still many that were letting out increasingly strange voices together. Their laughing was easily audible. The sounds of eating and repeated loud chewing, the goblins laughing and the club striking the ground in anger. It stopped. A. Eh? I found my voice. When the vibrations stops, the sound where something collapsing echoes. The strange voices of the other goblins had stopped, and simultaneously, the sound of collapsing continued, one, two times. I again opened my eyes, and slowly gazed toward the back, where three goblin had dropped to the ground. Yes, it was dead. W what is going on? Just past the three dead corpses were ten animals near goblins that had made a wheel. Individuals in the center had long wooden clubs and canes. One had a belt-like strap that one would usually attach to their coat or jacket. 
They had this many of them in here, and that's a goblin mage. It is an individual that can use magic. This is not some collection of strays. The goblins who were part of those who had fallen's family were taken aback, but it seems that the goblin mage was the leader of the crowd. He stuck out his cane to the exit of the nest hole and seemed to have ordered something. The other goblins squealed. They seemed to be in disbelief, but tried to move towards the exits. From the exit came a red flash, followed by the sound of something exploding. A bursting sound, which continued to happen three more times. With each flash, a goblin simultaneously died. Its head died in blood similar to the red flashes. This, is it magic? But I've never seen an attribute attack that eliminates goblins to precisely. Senior's magic attack is far less accurate. If on the other hand that person was swinging a two-handed sword. Oh. Goblin fell one after the other in order to shield the goblin mage who was concentratedly chanting something, poised before a cane. Then I saw a huge air mass become compressed in front of the goblin mage and flight towards goblins that are in front of the goblin mage's upper body. It collided with them from behind, and headed towards the exit where the red flashes were coming from, covered in the red blood of the goblins. That's the wind magic, air ball. How could goblins shoot such large spells? Too, the goblin mage's air ball was close to 50 centimeters in diameter. The goblins were only 120 cm tall, so it was quite strange that it was able to create one so massive. The section of the wall of the corridor which leads to the exit is shaved and burst with a deafening roar. The goblin mage raises a strange laugh. It then commanded the goblins who had survived being penetrated by the large ball of air to go in pursuit of something. In the next moment, the goblin mage's head was blown off instantaneously with a red flash from the section of the cave housing the exit. 3. W. Wow! It is said that the goblin mage's strength is hardly different from normal. Its magical barrier is no laughing matter. To pierce that in a single stroke, when the goblins were dead and quiet, the dead goblin mage's dead eyes had ceased to move. While thinking about this, the light flashes had stopped and it sounded like the explosions had as well. That person appeared slowly from the road of the darkness, walked towards me, Poff, Manuk, overlooking the two goblins that had been eliminated with the M1911A1, I was troubled. In the game, VMB, CP, crystal points, would drop when one defeated an enemy, and when one approaches the corpses, the CP would automatically be recovered. CP is one of the various elements of VMB that are integral to the game. The regeneration of health, to recover from physical attacks, as well as the ability to purchase weapons and replenish ammunition, reduced the destruction of items, weapons and the exoskeleton to a matter of having the necessary CP. But, after falling into this strange world, and defeating enemies for the first time, it seems there are no circumstances in which crystal points will appear. In other words, I have no choice but to make do with the crystal points currently in my possession, which I have massed over the course of three years of dedicated gameplay. Several times, version updates, the up in raw, and large expansions had increased the amount of VMB had become a monstrous title. Due to that and its rapidly expanding player base and CP earned by players. There's no use thinking about returning to my original world, even if I did. It might take years, decades, to return to there. I'm going to give up on that, to live in this world. As for this VMB power, it will, in every aspect, help me. I ought to be embarrassed, because honestly, I'm constrained in the use of its power. I use the M1911A1 to try to touch the goblin that had a hole opened in its head. But nothing happens. Not only was it just a corpse, the powered suit had no function to conveniently absorb the corpse. There should still be people, who seem to have been kidnapped, as well as goblins, inside. How should I do this? I narrowed my eyes and squatted to think next to the goblin's corpse and stared into the darkness in the back of the burrow. The extermination of goblins surely is not difficult, 
as long as I'm shooting from a distance before approaching. However, I can't lose too many bullets. I haven't tried whether or not I can buy bullets in the shop yet. I start the TSS, which is seated on my left arm and touch the monitor, continuing through to the ammunition purchase screen. However, the gears of war had begun to turn before the purchase could be completed. Kaya, a woman's scream echoed from the darkness at the back of the nest hole involuntarily. I immediately suspended the operation of the TSS, and point the M1911A1 toward the darkness. Someone's being attacked. Now, I should have the equipment and ammunition to overcome this situation. With my stance corrected and my M1911A1 poised to kill, I check the map on my goggles and reaffirm the surroundings. Strangely, there is a small portion of the map towards the inside. With the goggles and NV mode on again, I slowly resumed moving towards the back of the hole. Advancing 100 meters further to the final destination point was reflected in the map. The road of the nest hole which had spread quite broadly, has become a dead end. There was loose curve on the way. There was still distance, but there may be goblins beyond that point, so I hid behind the curve. I tucked the M1911A1 into its waist holster and switched to my primary. The MP5A4 toggling the safety switch to three bullet burst fire mode. I got into a kneeling position and looked down the iron sights that had been peeking out. I lined up the crosshair of the goggles with the iron sights in a straight line with the head of a goblin. The goggles react, and zoom in while centering the crosshair. In VMB, the basic equipment was the head goggles. Therefore, there were various bore sights for firearms as well as features to combat the reduction in function and vision. In addition, as an auxiliary function to the play style of using no sights, known as Iron Sectal. The goggle has a telescopic function built in, however, it was also taken into consideration to not make it too versatile or omnipotent, so the telescopic function requires some time to activate and use. That goblin is hitting just to the side of that woman's head. Three ugly animals, other than those to the side of the woman. Wait a second, aren't there too many? There are thirteen. First, I had to eliminate the three near the woman at once. By then, their attention had been drawn towards me. I turned on the safety on the MP5A4 and swapped back over to the M1911A1. I leave the silencer attached. There should be five rounds in the clip. Immediately I begin, because the woman is close by but I have to adjust the sights carefully. When the head of Goblin, the front sight, the crosshair and my aim become settled, but barely, it zooms in. When using the handgun system, magnification is only 1.1 times. Without the M1911A1 in my hands trembling, I point the barrel at the Goblin's head. Although life probably will be mowed down again and again from now on, I feel nothing. After all, it seems I'm unexpectedly cold-hearted, thinking such a thing. I pull the trigger. Along with the sound of the passing air, the goblin who was yelling in an increasingly strange voice and the one that had brandished a club towards the woman collapsed. Subsequently there were two shots, as the crosshair moved to two animals that were in the vicinity, here because it was at a low angle, so there was the possibility of misfiring. Their consciousness taken. The three goblins collapsed. I switched back to the MP5A4 and switched to the three bullet burst fire mode. I held it close to my face and aimed the stock to my shoulder. Jiagu Jiwa, within the circle of goblins, one particular goblin raised its voice, and the twelve other goblins turned in this direction. The funny thing is, not that with the trigger pulled, the muscle flashes red, but that there is little to no recoil. Firing blur, or shaking of the sights due to the exoskeleton, powered suit. It was like this in VMB. So it is likely that the recoil of this MP5A4 is due to it being an MP5A4 from VMB. It is not a real MP5A4, and the same recoil as in the game occurs here, where is kept to a minimum. 
and sliding the crosshairs to the next target of the head happens with ease. Verifying the crosshairs spread as I shoot, I ensured that the cross was intact and pulled the trigger again, which caused the crosshair to spread to the size of a head, indicating a decrease in accuracy. This spread also decreases quite quickly, especially when the distance between opponents and accuracy is required to overcome it. The use of the three bullet burst is incredibly valuable compared to full auto. The combusted propellant of the three bullet bursts and the flashes and muscle flash dance in the dark. Suddenly, the bodies of many of the goblins ruptured and split in half. What? What is that? The goblins blew up and a lump of something like blood, sprayed the liquid everywhere, while flying towards me. Firearm? Magic? I fell from the wall and immediately went into hiding further back. It landed on the rocks at the same time I retreated, and with a roaring blast, the wall was destroyed. With its enormous power, could it possibly be a frag grenade? The first thing that comes to mind is magic. This is a different, strange world so the existence of magic is possible, and the idea of it is certainly floating around in my mind. I didn't think goblins could wield this much power because they didn't seem very bright, but if it can shoot this power freely and consecutively, I may have lost my advantage. I thought to immediately go back to fighting, but I should not be impatient. I replace the MP5A4's magazine. I check to verify that no more of those bullets fly towards me and ready the MP5A4 again, then searched for the person who began shooting magic. Is it the one shaking the long stick? I am wearing clothes that looked something like his. I raise a war cry, because it was a survival instinct, and pierced the head of the goblin at the other end. I adjusted the crosshair to the rest of the animals few of which survived intact. After I checked the map to ensure that all of the dots representing the goblins that had once been visible were now gone, I saw a new dot appear. It wasn't approaching me, from behind, and so I advanced slowly into the nest. Woman, you aren't dead, are you? I was a bit restless, but there was a light spot on the map, so it shouldn't be a corpse. But it could be the goblin who was shooting magic just a little while ago. Oh, it's... I saw a person here. No doubt. I set the goggles in V mode back to normal, slowly moved towards her to speak. Anna, are you alright? The woman shows a questioning look for a moment, but eventually answered. Dash. Dash. I couldn't understand a word she said. Equipment M1911A1 Using large caliber bullets that sought to stop enemy movements, a variant of the M1911, designed by John Browning and developed by Colt in the United States. It is a one-hit, 45 ACP handgun. MP5A4, Germany-made Heckler and Koch submachine gun. This submachine gun is most used in the world and there are many variations used in various applications such as the military, police and anti-terrorist forces. 5. I removed the group of goblins from the depths of their den, a small, room-like space. Everything was fine now, but when I tried to call out to the kidnapped women, the words would not come out. Of course, I cannot understand the words of the other party. We looked at each other in silence. Seriously. I didn't think transferring worlds would be this hard. For replenishing CP, there is no hope. And I could not establish a conversation. In this different world, though I cannot understand the language, perhaps I could communicate. There was a slight light being emitted from white flowers in the room. The woman clearly doesn't know what to do. What should I do? Because I'm a foreigner. Words will not go through, foreigner. I started up the TSS, turning away so that it is not seen, and tried to turn on automatic translation from the communications settings. This feature was essential to VMB, with more than 5 million players worldwide. It assisted the voice communication between foreign players. If this feature was turned on, words spoken to other players was automatically translated into the language of that player's country or language of choice if the default was changed. At the very least, this function should work. She again calls out, 
and I turn back to her with uneasiness. Dash, 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 you know, are you all right? It was a miracle. Indeed, it had translated her words so that I could understand, but the other party does not have this kind of function, so she will not be able to understand my words. N no, it's nothing. Is it all right over there? I called out to her while waving both hands aside to indicate there were no problems, with my body. D do you speak the shared Orlando language that most foreign adventurers speak? Do you understand what I am saying, Orlando? And adventurers use it? Well, I guess that adventurers learn multiple languages in order to communicate wherever they go. I returned a nod to show I understood, and I realized that it is impossible to speak. I guess that you know what I'm saying? Good. Oh, thank you. I was thinking another one would be useless. I nod at her words, and notice that there were vines binding her limbs, which I tore, and she woke up the limbs that had fallen asleep due to lack of circulation. The woman was very beautiful up close. She was light-skinned with a medium-length bob. Her blue eyes and glossy blonde hair shine even in this dim light. I wonder if she was a model. Though she wore leather armor, the she was wearing was the type for females, with a small round shoulder guard as a substitute for the sleeves. At the waist was a skirt. However there were pants underneath that. At first glance, it looks like the way a woman warrior would dress. She was trembling, little by little it increased. I helped her, but she must still be frightened. I guess it would be like that to be caught by a group of goblins and have one of those animals bring its club down just beside her head. I don't know how different the goblins of this world are in comparison to those of the fantasy setting I know of, but I don't know of many in which women are carried off to a place like this. I'm all right now. Okay, all right, perfectly fine. I wish she could understand my words. Still. I couldn't help but comfort her while being careful not to touch her in a sexual way. I clapped my hand on her shoulder and patted her on the back. She clung on to my arm, trying to rectify her abnormal breathing and trembling with her head down. I wonder how much time we spent like this. Maybe 10 or 20 minutes, might have been just a few minutes. In the dark, dim, dank room, her quivering ceased as I rubbed her back gently. She lifted her face and stared into my eyes. My name is Ashley Zipanel, a guild investigator from the General Guild in the Kurt Murga Kingdom. And you are? She asked me for my name. I, my name. My name is Saito Ren. Saito, family name, age 25, single, no girlfriend or his girlfriend is non-existent. I especially loved FPS games. I continued playing from my school days and was so absorbed that, before I knew it, I went as far as to go to some major world competitions, and I became hooked on the prizes, but to make ends meet with this kind of hobby is difficult, and so I got a job with a peripheral device manufacturer that made products for PC. I had to working in the semi-professional industry as well as being employed in a PC peripherals manufacturer. It was hard to get up to go to work every day. FPS tournaments were individual games rather than team battles. VMB also has several tournaments and leagues. I was active as the starting player, Black for the Team P0W Dare 2, but I usually played solo during the off period. The woman identified herself as Ashley Zipanel, but I was troubled as to whether to give my real name or IGN Black. I chose to use my IGN rather than the Japanese Saito Ren. It feels as if the one who had come to this world was Black, the FPS player from VMB, Black San. I haven't heard of that name before, but you are obviously a high rank adventurer. I have no excuse, you just helped me. But could you accompany me to Myral Village? I, as an investigator of the General Guild, but came here after a goblin was subdued in this area. We divided the area among us and I was attacked and brought to this place. I must report this incident, so I have to get there as soon as possible. Ashley looked to be about 20 years old, but she was extremely enthusiastic. Even though her life was put at risk moments before, 
She seemed to only look ahead. I nod to convey my approval. I have no reason to disagree, because I need to get to a place where there are other people, and this proposition is mutually beneficial. I stood and turned to the exit to set off towards this moral village, until I was restrained, by Ashley's words. Oh, Black San, please wait a little. My tool bag wasn't brought here, we have to collect the evidence of the subjugation. The mage class also drops a magic stone that we should take. Proof of subjugation? I give up. I don't understand that part. Moreover, what's a magic stone? No, it couldn't be. It's a crystal. It may still be possible to acquire CP. Ashley was walking around the dim room, but didn't seem to notice my confusion and desire. UN. What's over there that's so dark? It's when she seemed to have hit her head on something. She put one hand before her chest and grasped a fist. She closed her eyes and began concentrating on something. Tilda, comma, tilda, light. With her hands open she chanted something that I couldn't understand. Even with the automatic translation feature. Before her rose a soft pulsized orb of light. It hovered above her palm, and she lightly threw it. It was hollow, and the ball of light lit up the room like an incandescent bulb. The state of the room was now clear. The light that the magic could put out was extremely bright. I was stunned to see magic up close. But Ashley kept facing to the sack of cloth towards the back that used to be a goblin mage, and went to it with a trot. I got it. I'm so glad it's here. While saying so, Ashley pulled out a single dagger from the cloth bag. In a moment of high alert, I reflexively pulled out the M1911A1 but realized I had not replaced the magazine. The hammer struck the firing pin sounded out with a faint tut tut. I don't know what Ashley intends to do, but if she directs that towards me, with the MP5A4, I'll... I kept my aim trained on her. She pulled the dagger from its sheath, and plunged it into the chest of the goblin mage, then cut it open in one stroke. What is she doing? Anyone who can stick a dagger into a body is super scary, regardless of whether or not it's dead. I was terrified and shocked by her bizarre behavior, as she opened its chest cavity and rummaged around inside, producing a whitish stone about 2 to 3 centimeters in diameter from within. When she pulled off the sash it had around its neck, she brought it over here. Black San, here is the proof of suppression and the magic stone. Unfortunately this magic stone is a non-attribute, seeing as the goblin used air ball before, but this band is quite good. Is that so? Was the magic stone a suppression proof, or did we just pick it up because we killed it? However, this magic stone really resembles a crystal, but I cannot collect it as CP by holding in my hand. And what should I do with this obi? The band slash sash. I blankly stared at the stone and Obi and pushed them into the magazine belt on my pouch. I pulled the M1911A1 out of its waist holster and pretended to be looking around, while stealthily reloading out of her sight. When I was done replacing the magazine, I put it back in its holster. I'm left with just two magazines for the MP5A4, and to summon the ammunition box, I must hide because this kind of power is unknown to this world. Ashley must have noticed my suspicious behavior and was looking at me from head to toe in the light of the magic she had cast. By the way, Black San, that goblin just now. What magic did you use? You seem to be a magician, but you don't have a magic wand or equipment, or is there one inside? Or is that short black stick of yours a magic weapon? She provides me with a variety of key words. Magician, magic weapons, magic equipment? She tried to describe the MP5A4 that I had on me and pointed at it, to which I nodded, and showed it to her. Awesome. It's the first time I've seen such a powerful magical weapon. There are something called mage weapons in the Bzhuban Empire. Does Black Sand come from Bzhuban? As Ashley was excited, I couldn't help but return a wry smile, to have her interpret it as excuse me. But please don't pry for answers, so that she wouldn't seek them out. But, the name of an empire came out, and it was new to me. 
I wonder if it would be a good disguise to use round here. Equipment M1911 A1 Using large caliber bullets that sought to stop enemy movements, a variant of the M1911. Designed by John Browning and developed by Colt in the United States. It is a one-hit, 45 ACP handgun. MP5A4, Germany made Heckler and Koch submachine gun. This submachine gun is most used in the world, and there are many variations used in various applications such as the military, police and anti-terrorist forces, along with Ashley. I began moving towards the exit of the small room. If there was a survivor among the goblins outside, I would kill them without hesitation. The two of us came to the entrance of the den. It's pitch black, isn't it? The time displayed on my goggles was was 2234. I don't know whether a day in this world was 24 hours or not, but there was no moonlight or starlight, only Ashley's light orb spell that she had used. We hurried back to Mayor Arrow Village. But, although I say that, I didn't understand the dangers posed by walking on the rods during the night. It could be too dangerous. I wonder if it would be better to wait for the sunrise, or to walk through the forest and along the riverside during the night. Although I wanted to suggest that, it would be impossible for my words to get through to Ashley. The two of us lined up near the riverside, which was gently flowing. As we stared at the flow of the waterfall, I saw a faint light shaking downstream. Anno, ah, could that light be an acquaintance of yours, or a search party? I pointed at the light and tapped her shoulder because she was still staring at the waterfall. That light orb. Surely, Senpai came searching for me. Ashley shook her light left and right to call to the one downstream. The other side seemed to have noticed, too and the light had begun shaking left and right, only, it's probably the same kind of light as Ashley's light spell, though, though the color was a somewhat different hue. Ashley Tilda, thank God Tilda, from downstream came a woman soldier who had short hair, and was slightly taller than me. The two women ran to each other to verify mutual safety. Rather, Ashley seems to have scolded her. I was a bit troubled staring at them from the front of the den wondering how I should talk to them from now on. Black Kun, I hope everything was fine, for helping Ashley when she needed saving. We are very grateful, thank you. I am Rami, a general guild investigator of the Kurt Murga kingdom. In the back of the burrow there seems to have been a goblin mage, would you show me the proof of suppression? The woman warrior who identified herself as Rami was slightly taller than me. I was 176 centimeters, so Rami was certainly above 180 centimeters, and Ashley was much shorter than me. Probably about 160 centimeters. Rami carried a large sword on her back and had red leather armor. This person was also beautiful like Ashley, and furthermore, it was brow. She was similar to one of the Amazons, but not wearing a bikini-like armor. I retrieved the obi of the goblin mage from the pouch and handed it to Rumi. Certainly this is a goblin mages. That a superior species appeared in such a place, as a labyrinth appeared. When Rumi finished confirming the obi, she returned it to me. A search of the nest hole is ordered to two men who were holding a torch in the rear, probably her subordinates. Black Kun. I think I heard that Ashley asked you to accompany her to Mayor Arrow Village. I hope you will support her in making her report at the guild branch office. I nodded and expressed my approval, and begun to walk with Ashley and Rami downstream. From Mayor Arrow Village to here was not that far, only about a one hour walk. Shall I hear you report? I arrived at Mayor Arrow Village and had Black stay in the only inn in the village. For the village to stay in demand, it is the general guild's responsibility to pay a fee. Rami Senpai. Members of the Residents Guild, Brudo, and Kayeth, and I, gathered at the General Guild branch office in the village. The General Guild branch office, unlike the General Guild branch in the village or city, had a smaller number of staff, patrolled the village, and used the acceptance and completion proof procedure for requests. To begin with, 
The original General Guild itself was managed by the nation or state for domestic security, maintenance, subduing labyrinths, securing resources, training of personnel, and dispatching talented personnel. After parting with Rumi Senpai, I reported having been taken away by surprise to a goblin den and being rescued by Black San. Then were joined by Rumi Senpai and the others. Burido and Kayeth who investigated the nest hole reported that it was confirmed to be a nest hole. In the back of the innermost room, there were two goblins in the middle of the room, and sixteen others, including the goblin mage. It was confirmed that there were eighteen goblin corpses. I thoroughly searched the small room, but it seemed that there were only the remains of some of their meals, no other recognizable victims. We investigated the goblin corpses, but the wound in the head was caused by something circular piercing it and leaving an open hole, which is common. I opened the wound just in case and examined it, but nothing was left. In Zipanel's report, melee weapons were not used. With that, it seems that we are definitely dealing with magic attacks or attacks with magical weapons similar to that. When Rumi Senpai heard that, she closed her eyes and the maid an expression as if thinking. Originally, we were issued the goblin quest from the general guild, and visited Mayor Arrow Village to survey after the report of stray goblins being subdued, and the result was the discovery of not only a large number of goblins, but the discovery of a higher species, the goblin mage, since Black Sand killed them. I gave him what had been looted from the corpse but we must investigate the cause of the large number of goblins and higher species occurring later. The higher species of sub-races, unlike normal species, have magical power, intelligence, high strength, and the ability to use magic and skills, and the higher rank species are not naturally occurring species in nature. To say that a higher species is present is to say that there is a place where magical essence has accumulated and become rich and dense. Sub-races will evolve into higher species by absorbing the magic essence. Magic essence has a tendency to accumulate and collect, and the cause could be many things. Veins of demon or and demonic water, a being having great magical power, the nest of a dragon, or a labyrinth. Labyrinths are a kind of monster that has existed since ancient times, confirmed in earliest of human records, and are malicious. They are said to send an advance guard for an evil deity in order to destroy the world according to old traditions and myths brought from a labyrinth. A labyrinth spreads deeply every few years, creating more powerful monsters and sub-races to release into the outside world, all of which were hostile to the surface dwellers. However, many years of fighting against the labyrinth has taught the surface dwellers go into the labyrinth for magic stones that can be taken from monsters after battle as a method for securing resources. Once again, it is necessary to widen the search area around Mare Arrow Village. I don't think there is a dragon, and maybe it was just a Norvain, but perhaps there may be a newborn labyrinth. I will go back Keith Ashley to the Fort City Barger. Burido and Keith both should arrange for acceptance. Rumi Senpai changed the talk to the topic that concerned me the most. So, Ashley, what do you think about Black Kun? I don't think that he is a foreign spy. Truthfully I am unable to understand his words, but, looking at that short staff, I can't tell what kind of attribute it has. And he has protective gear I have never seen before. He should not be allowed to unnecessarily contact the locals. The behavior of a spy is difficult to comprehend. He seemed to have smiled bitterly when I told him the name of Bshuban Empire, but he may have been fleeing from that area. And as a traveler, he did not seem to have a tool bag either. Basically, they think he may be a spy. I wonder, have you seen the inn yet? Would you like to? We'll consider it. Although he had been observing the surroundings since entering Mayor Barrel Village, he had a tourist-like atmosphere rather than that of one committing espionage. It seems he is very ignorant. And from the look on his face, perplexed over the use of the word in, I am also of the same opinion. There is no spy, 
just a boy with no common sense. Because I understand courtesy, it is noble behavior than to act act as the peasants and plebeians, I'd say he is probably a youth who escaped the purges of the empire. Certainly the severity of the Ice Wolf Emperor of Bzhuban reaches even this remote Kurtmurga kingdom from far away. I don't know whether it reaches over here, but there probably is no damage as a result, so you will have to accompany him to Baga. He isn't registered to the general guild, and in the future we need to watch his movement in case he tries anything. We decided on our plan for the future and then separated. I want to wipe my body before going to bed even though it is already night. The odor from the goblins was smelly. On the second day after falling into this strange world, though without regard to my intentions, my destination was decided for me. With this settled, Black Kun, shall we go to the Fort City Barga? When I was brought to the village for the first time, it was pitch black, and I, the penniless, was guided to the inn along the dark street. The innkeeper was a an auntie who described the inn as having meals every morning and night for the low price of just two silvers. I didn't have money, much less two slivers. Brudo, who had guided me here, immediately paid the money. The next morning, I managed to get up in time for breakfast and consumed a meal for the first time in this world. Rumi and Ashley also met me in the dining room on the first floor of the inn and took a seat nearby so we could talk while eating together. No, I had heard the story so I didn't listen. Fort City Barga? I was accompanied to this village in order to confirm the goblin den, so I wonder what I had to go there for. An arrest, possibly. Last night I only had to do simple communication, but I still do not have any identification or anything similar to it, so I am really suspicious. Black Kun. You don't have even an adventurer's registration? Well you don't look in any way to be a merchant or craftsman. So the closest place to get identification is Baga. Therefore you must get proof of identification, and then you can cash in the Goblin's Obi, band, and get some money. As well as some guild points after you get registered. Adventurers. I somehow can understand that. But I wonder what the difference is from an explorer? But it seems I won't be arrested. Certainly an ID card would be a good to have and to collect knowledge early on will be important in this world. I also need to know as soon as possible if it is feasible to return to my original world. I nodded to Rumi and approved her suggestion. In the meanwhile during us talking, Ashley had consumed her meal silently and calmly, or perhaps I should say refined and elegantly. However she was truly a beautiful person, her blonde, medium length, hair was illuminated by the morning light. She gave off a divine brightness, and I thought I had seen the original world again. Yeah, please accompany me, but eat first and we will leave immediately afterwards. Black Kun, can you ride a horse? I denied her while shaking my head, as expected. There aren't horses in VMB, but motorcycles and bikes. Then, Ashley, please arrange for a carriage. We should keep the carriage light so we can get there in half a day, but with the extra luggage and tool bag we'll have to leave as early as possible so we can get there before dusk, and borrow something like a picture book from the village chief. Along the way we should teach Black Kun how to pronounce and read Orlando so he can be able to speak directly, eventually. Hi, understood. Then I will go immediately, and I'll be back later. Ashley finished her meal and left the dining room. I could hear thanks to the automatic translation and the translated sentence was displayed in the head goggles. This is thanks to the translation function for text chat as well as voice chat in VMB. It is only a matter of time before I am able to speak properly. Originally I was not only in VMB, but I had shown my face in international competitions of other FPS titles, including European ones and learn to speak some of the words just fine, mainly English, that's why, I had the automatic translation turned off at first, Rumi's eyes became sharper just a little while ago, and I saw this after I had confirmed Ashley had left, she had short brown hair and was also a very beautiful woman, but there was a very strange atmosphere, 
I will be teaching you to speak Orlando and some common words through various stories that consist of these words. That short cane of yours, what is your purpose for coming here with that? The possibility of being arrested apparently still does not seem to be zero. I hardly think that you would believe what I am saying even if I spoke. I myself don't know why I am here. I sort of fell into this alien world on my own, so I'm just kind of lost. And for my purpose, I am going to live here and get back to my world if it is even possible. But I don't think you would believe me, even if you could understand me. I stared at Remy as she seemed to be turning it over in her mind to try and understand what I said. The shaking is amazing. For now, I have gotten into the carriage, rather, we are loading the carriage. Remy's sitting in the driver's seat and is operating the carriage. Ashley and I are loading hay into the wagon to feed the horses, and sat side by side with it as a cushion to read one of the picture books a children's fairy tale. Or rather I was being read to and told what it means. However the road on which we are driving is not neatly paved, and the carriage bounces and vibrates, occasionally leaping in the air giving the feeling of weightlessness, with the book following along with it through the air. It doesn't seem to be car sickness. I guess carriage sickness? The books that we are reading were borrowed by Ashley from the village head and told of the building of the Kurt Murga kingdom. At least one of these books were put into every village and city, and the village head would read the book to the village's children. It's like some kind of patriotic education, summarizing the founding of Kurt Murga, one of the adventurers born in the old days, about 500 years ago, was determined to help the populace suffering from the oppression and tyranny of the time. The land for and funds were gathered by diving into newly discovered underground labyrinths to the southwest of Orlando, and after cleaning and purifying the land, he established a new country there. The country accepted many who suffered from the tyranny of the other countries, and resisted pressure from those foreign entities who got angry at another country stealing its citizens. In other words, the adventurers who work on the ground is different from an explorer who dives into labyrinths. I think it is all the same as hunting monsters, but there is probably some other clear distinction. Ashley taught me the pronunciation and intonation of each letter one by one as we headed to the Fort City Barga. It seems we have arrived without incident in Barga, but, I would not be surprised if something did go wrong. The sound of multiple somethings running could be heard but there was no indication on the map of anyone else nearby. So it seems they were further off. Hey, it comes. Increases. I put my hand on the driver's seat and told this to Remy and Ashley while standing up. Black Sam. I don't see anything around us, though. Running. I hear. Increases. Ashley. Glass wolves have attacked in this area. It is likely that they will attack the horses. We should stop here and fight them. Remy judged the situation and decided to stop. Then leapt from the coachman's stand. Remy lifts the sword that had lain across the driver's seat and unsheathes it. The sword was a wide, two-handed blade about one meter in length, double-edged, also known as a claymore, from the sack Ashley had stuck into the carriage. She also, out of the sack came a sword longer than it and then a round shield, also longer than the sack. As for that, it's generally known as a item box or an endless bag. But isn't it similar to using a different dimension for storage? Ashley's weapon was a short sword about 70 centimeters in length and a round shield that was a buckler. Ashley pulled it from her sheath and was increasingly vigilant towards the rear of the wagon. Black Cun, I don't know how you fight but I'll have to rely on you for guarding the middle. Which direction are they coming from? I kneel in the wagon and set the mode on the MP5A4 from safety to three bullet burst fire. I pointed to the forest on the north side of the highway. On my map I could now see the dot. There were three of them, and they were moving incredibly quickly. Behind the trees, a black dog came into sight, the length of just one of them. Probably about five meters in length they passed through the forest quickly. They, attacking, I declared this and opened fire, aiming at the animals and pulled the trigger twice to hit their torsos. It had very fast movement speed, 
but I couldn't aim that fast, not even the best player in VMB could, even with VMB having high speed movement, I shot ahead of them where I expected them to be and hit the first, then the other two continued ahead, unaware that the one ahead had died, and tumbled and fell over its corpse. That's amazing, or after all, it's that magic attack of an unknown attribute from that magic weapon that was in the report. Black Kun, that was wonderful skill, do you want to skin it? We can sell its hide. And no. First, hurry, let's. I have never skinned an animal before. In this world something like that is natural and common, but it is not possible for me. Nor is it the norm for someone from my world. It isn't possible to do it, because I don't have the knowledge of how it works. It seems that common sense is not enough anymore, and it cannot further my knowledge. There is no point to accumulating knowledge when I can't understand it. In that way we recontinued our journey and arrived at Fort City Barga without incident. The Fort City Barga is the central city of this area, and is enclosed by a 5 meters high stone wall. It is in the shape of a large rectangle with 2 kilometers sides though it seems somewhat skewed and distorted in parts. The population surpasses 60,000, and it seems to be the metropolis of the western Kurtmurga kingdom. The reason the city extends to here and is surrounded by walls is due to demonic beasts and the sub-races, as well as labyrinths. There are labyrinths to the north, south, and east of the city and adventurers gravitate to the city to fend off the monsters and gather materials from the labyrinths. The merchants come to make money off of the adventurers' findings, and trade with them. Knights were stationed here in order to deal with the overflow of, of sub-races, monsters, and demonic creatures, and in the castle resides the feudal lord. And now that a new labyrinth had been discovered near Mare Barrel Village, there was now a labyrinth to the west as well. Remy said that there was a labyrinth to the north, west, east, and south of the city. This city was likely to continue to undergo radical development, more so than ever before due to the new discovery. I worried whether any problems would arise when I entered the city, but Remy, who was a guild investigator, could enter without a hitch and get by the gatekeeper. She appeared to have shown some sort of ID, but Ashley and I went unverified. The wagon rocked as we rode through a large, wide street that seemed to be the main road to Barga. Looking at the surroundings, the road was lined with stone houses and merchants. Masonry seems to be important or a symbol of wealth, because there were only wooden buildings in Mare Barrel Village, and this city was absolutely beautiful, like the French Carcassonne. Our destination in this city, the General Guild, was in the center of the city near the White Castle, where the feudal lord resides. It is also known as Barudaji Castle. After looking at the castle, I look over to Ashley to verify my action plan. Ashley, I, in the guild, what? Do? Yes, first let's do adventurer's registration, because Black San needs an ID card. Because, it would lower the evaluation and strength of the guild. Adventurers must have proof of experience and or exploration or else they will be rejected. You have proof of defeating the Goblin Mage, so you should be accepted. After that, for a while, stay in Barga. There are more chances to live here and work as an adventurer. Even merchants and craftsmen flock to here. It is a city with much opportunity. I don't know about merchants or craftsmen. But Black Sand can give in the results as an adventurer immediately. Ashley. I'm going to the director to give a report. In the meantime, guide Black Kun and find an inn and a place to eat. So then. A good inn. Somewhere with good meals, and is close to the guild. Thank you. Ashley. Two. Ask. Assistance. Please. Well, so be it. I'll make Ashley do it. We should eat dinner together. There's only dried meat on the wagon and I'm hungry. Okay, I understand. We have arrived. Black San. This is the Barga branch of the General Guild. The General Guild was not just a single building. There were many wide and large buildings that seemed to be for different purposes. Rumi operated the wagon and went towards the back of the site where there was a sign saying, Fork ahead. Maybe stables or a parking lot? It is probably something like that. 
and I followed after Ashley and entered one of the larger one-storied houses. This building is the General Guild's main building for adventurers and explorers. Here, orders for new registration and requests can be done. Do you see that receptionist over there? You can sign the forms to register as an adventurer there. In a nutshell, the General Guild was like a bank. Something like a bulletin board stood to my left and right, and large numbers of adventurers swarmed around them looking for requests. Some reception desks and counter windows were to the front and there were many staff working there, moving around. The window where Ashley told me to go to was the window with a chair in front of it at the edge of the line, so I assume this will take a while. Welcome to the Kurt Murga Kingdom General Guild, Barga Branch. Are you here for adventurer registration today? Sitting at the window was a receptionist, a slender and fair-skinned beauty. Her ears were long and small, covered by straight silver hair. Her eyes were the most beautiful shade of blue I had ever seen. She was a woman from the elf race. Hello, Mira Maria. This is Black San. He's here to become an adventurer. It seems she and Ashley were acquaintances. Well, Ashley is a guild investigator. It isn't all that mysterious for her to be acquainted with those working in the same guild, nor to encounter them while in the guild. Oh, Ashley. You returned. Welcome back. As for that guy. Are you sure he's the right person for you to accompany someone to register? Not that it isn't unusual. It is. But it's not that kind of relationship. I met him while investigating and we came here together. Ashley was being made fun of by the elf Mira Maria while her cheeks were dyed red. Mira Maria smiles as if it was funny and interesting. Speaking of elves, they tend to live long lives but it is difficult to tell their age from their appearance, and their life expectancy is unknown. In an older sister-like manner, Ashley began to feel for something. But I want to hurry up and register. Aside from that, let's register quickly. After this, present the evidence or subjugation so we can go to the inn earlier. Yes yes, so Black San, please fill in this paper. Can you write letter? If you can't I can do it for you and if is not necessary to fill in everything. However the information cannot be modified later on, so please take care not to make any mistakes. On the paper was issued were several entries. There was name, age, hometown, main weapon, main magic attribute, main skill, and if I had a tax certificate or not, adding up to a total of eight items. Please write it for me. It seemed that it was to be written with a brush rather than a pen, pencil. I was likely to make a mistake because I don't have experience in writing with utensils like their brush or quill. So I should write black only for your name? Ashley was takes the feather pen and was about to write, but the word only bothered me. I wonder if she suspected that it was a pseudonym. That reminds me that Ashley identified herself as Ashley Zipanel when we met. Up until now, People whose names I knew had first and last parts, possibly born as aristocrats and nobility, and people inherit their family's name. In other words, they are suspicious of whether or not I was a noble or something. Yes, yes, black is fine, please. Okay, then age and birthplace. I, 24 years old. Hometown, blank. 24 years old. That's older than me. And the main weapon of use and magic attribute? Blank. Both. Yes. And what about for skills and abilities? I don't know what skills or abilities I have. What about fencing? I don't know if my skills from VMB count, nor if I even have them right now. So, they're also blank. Yes. Then do you have a tax certificate from the last place you lived? No. I don't. After all, Having someone else write it, my name and age were the only information I could provide. However, it may be bad that I don't have a tax certificate. Mira Maria who had been listening to the exchanges between me and Ashley were now, clear, sharp, and doubtful. Apparently I was a suspicious individual. Excuse me, Black San, do you not have any experience in taxes? In the Kurtmerger Kingdom. Those over 15 are obligated to pay taxes, 
It is 30 silver, or 30,000 a year until you are 20 years old, and from 21 it is 1 gold coin, so a tax of 100,000 is necessary for a year. When you left your hometown or parents house, did your parents say nothing about a tax payment record? I had casually confirmed the currency of this world before arriving in Barga in the wagon on the way here. The gold um, one stone, one um, one copper, ten stone, ten um, ten copper, one hundred um, one hundred copper, one silver, one thousand um, ten silver, ten thousand um, one hundred silver, one gold, one hundred thousand um, ten gold. 1 m 100 gold, 1 platinum coin, 10 m This was the value of the coins. However, I don't know what to do. I fell into another world, just to pay taxes? The current conversation so far tells me that those who approach in order to become adventurers are expected to pay taxes. I, who fell into a different world, paying taxes. How do you expect me to do that? This may be rather bad. I may end up incarcerated for tax evasion. That being said, tax payment records are necessary to become an adventurer. Why in the world is it so hard to become an adventurer? Tear slash tears slash lacrimal secretion slash sympathy. Seeking freedom, from country to country. The world perfects the art of hunting demons. Though there doesn't seem to be many local officials or do adventurers hold that sort of qualification? The name Kurt Merger is attached to the front of the guild, and in this alien world, the Adventurers Guild was an institution separate from the country. It was created by the country, but is not managed by it, so this is essentially the public employment office? Well, this does make some sense. Honestly, of my, parents, accident, death. It does, not heard. The story around that. Oh, I am terribly sorry. That was rude of me. Then, for now will you act as an adventurer and pay the tax in the future? Yes, intention, is. So, the 10% from the rewards will be turned in as tax and the last year worth of taxes amounts to 100,000 or, and a total of 200,000 for this year's taxes, and the 10% tax on rewards will continue until the taxes are paid off. But please be careful and note that this year's tax deadline is 12.30, in three months. If it is not paid by the deadline, please be careful, because you may face jail time or public humiliation and execution. Oh, I took that pretty well. I I ah. Uh, but should I put my faith in this lie? But with age it is obvious that one must become an adult and mature and tax payment is usually left to the parent unless there is a case like this. But since I said my parents died in an accident, it would be convenient for others to believe that excuse. No, perhaps death in this strange world is not uncommon. Dangerous monsters live throughout the world, whether it be from a labyrinth, or people insisting on causing strife. Security and safety in this world is fundamentally bad. And now, with the current conversation, it seems that one year is 12 months and January is 30 days. If anything, I will have to ask Cashley. Yes, I understand. I replied to all of Miramaria's questions and maintained a straight face. When I looked to the side, I saw Ashley staring at the registration form. There were so many blanks. I wonder if there was something wrong with that. Ashley, the paper, please. Black San. Please register with your biometric information with this crystal. It's fine if you just drip a drop of blood on top of it. Please use this needle. Miramaria produced a crystal about 20 centimeters in diameter on top of a pedestal of wood. I couldn't see it well from here, but it seemed that there was some sort of operating panel on the other side. I watched as the paper was inserted into the control panel. I took the needle and readied the hand I intended to stab. I probably have to stick it to the skin of my fingertip, and it only has to come out of the glove, but... This body? Was this body even human? When I stab myself, and blue blood pours out, would I be hated? I prick my finger. While a bit puzzled by this, I gingerly stick it into my finger. My blood seems to be red, somehow or another, and I dropped it onto the crystal. 
which blinked white when it received the drop. The light quickly subsided. The bleeding stopped immediately. A, A, what, why are they doing that? Did I do something funny? The air solidified and a card about the size of a pass came out of the pedestal from where the crystal rides. Black San, it is the adventurous registration card. Please verify that there aren't any mistakes, and please be sure that the blanks are filled in later. I picked up the card and verified the information on it. Tilda Adventurer Registration Card Tilda Name Black Powder Age 24 Birthplace Hometown VMB Main Weapon None Main Magic Attribute None Skills None Abilities None Tax Payment Method Adventurer Award Rank G-020 What is this? My name became Black Powder. How did they come up with my team name from my original world, P0W Dare? And my hometown is VMB. That is to say, this world has acknowledged the existence of VMB, and although my weapons, magic attribute, skills and abilities should be known, it is listed as none? Is there a problem? If not, your registration is complete. Then, do you want a description of adventurer terms? Why, yes, problem. No, regards, thank you. So then, the adventurer system is easy to explain. Adventurers can accept an order or request in the general guild's main building, but each request is given a set rank. This prevents reckless adventurers from being injured or killed by taking two highly ranked requests. There are ten ranks. From the bottom there is G, then F, E, D, C, B, A, S, 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 and S, S, S. In order to raise in rank, requests gives guild points upon completion, also set for each requests, and they are also added upon presenting proof of subduing monsters and sub-races. Please note that you should sell it to the general guild. In addition, there is a rank up examination from D rank. When one reaches rank D, they can also apply to become an explorer. Is everything fine up till that point? The ranking system was a popular template. However, I wonder if the presentation and sale of suppression proof is in order to prevent repeated presentation of items by many people? Well, there is no point in worrying about it and becoming an explorer at rank D. I wonder why it is limited? Why, explorers, rank, D? Exploring labyrinths underground is dangerous, and those who die have their soul and magic stolen to sustain the labyrinth. The labyrinth brings a variety of benefits, but we must subdue the evil it produces. To prevent reckless challenges by those inadequate or people trying to get rich quick, and in order to prevent the sub races and magical beasts from overflowing, the general guild manages it and does not recognize ability below rank D is capable, so they are not permitted to enter. I see, understand, I do. But, to continue, it can receive requests in this building, give completion reports in, and you can receive receipt of remuneration from the sale of loot next door. Thank you for listening. I'm finished describing it. I am looking forward to Black Sand's success. It's over. Black San, let's quickly go and sell the obi, then let's go eat. Listening to that speech had gotten me tired, and I hastened when Ashley said this, got up, and headed next door to the annex. My earbuds captured Mira Maria's muttering, and she had likely seen the back of them, but didn't understand their meaning. Truly an idiot. After finishing registering as an adventurer, we went to the general guild annex room. There were artisan shops lining the commercial center, and what seemed to be the main guild buildings for the magic guild, the magic hall, the commerce guild, having the commerce hall, and there was a museum, a training school, a management ridge, and many other buildings, it felt like a general office building. In the annex, it was similar to the main building, there was a check in counter with tables to spread out the materials, and there was a waiting area. The presentation table is over there. Ashley pointed to a table that we went to. Behind the window was an old gentleman with a moustache and a monocle. Welcome. I am the appraiser Lesmond. Please present your guild card and suppression proof. Yes, 
Thank you. I passed the guild card and the goblin mage's obi to Lesmond. Lesmond put the card at the base of a crystal on a pedestal on the counter and spread out the goblin mage's obi, touching it lightly. Will you know from doing just that? Lesmond has the appraisal skill. Besides, at level 3, it becomes analysis. Thanks to Ashley I understood what was going on, but it was appraisal. I wonder if such a thing would develop in me, and it evolves after reaching a certain level. It is a stunning goblin mage's armband. The purchase price in 55 silver, 55,000 or, you will receive 300 points for defeating a goblin mage, so Black Sama will be promoted from rank G to rank E. Congratulations. E? What about F? Yes. From G to F requires 25 points. However, from F to E, it is 250 points. I see, from 300 there would be enough for the 275 from G to E, and 25 left over on the way to D. Thank you very much, Black San. You are now rank E, though. Please do try not to overdo it. E, thanks, Ashley. I accepted the card from Lesmond and checked it. Tilda Adventurer Registration Card Tilda Name Black Powder Age 24 Birthplace, Hometown VMB Main Weapon None Main Magic Attribute None Skills None Abilities None Tax Payment Method Adventurer Award Rank E, 25500. So it seems for re-rank I will need 500 points, and I will confirm tomorrow if I can do it in a single request. So, shall we go there the inn? Raises. Lowers eyebrows. The sun has already begun to set, and Rumi is probably tired waiting. Black Sama, I look forward to your return. Ashley showed me the way out of the annex, and to the inn Rumi recommended. Knock. Ah, the key isn't working. Excuse me. It's General Guild Investigator Rumi. A stray goblin was suppressed in Mayor Arrow Village. After I separated from Ashley and Black Kun, immediately went to the office building of the General Guild had come to the director of the research office. The office was very simple, just an office desk and bookcase. But on the wall hung a lance, used by the director during his adventures. Indeed, I understand. An investigation committee will be dispatched to Mayor Arrow Village, and perhaps a troop of knights depending on when they set off and the severity of the problem. If it was just a low-class monster, it should be tasty prey. The director raised his head and laughed. Garaba Subaritsu. He was a beast man, with brown hair, pale yellow eyes, in his fifties. Though his body didn't seem to be getting any weaker. So he pressed Rumi to continue. So, this man called Black. Is he a matter of concern? Yes, he has no armor, has never seen magic, doesn't know about the Kurtmurga kingdom and has no common sense. He is likely a fallen aristocrat from another country. Don't be so roundabout. Which one? Excuse me. Judging from the performance of his tools, the short walking stick, his weapons look like the musical instruments from the Bzhuban Empire. The Ice Wolf Emperor has crushed more than half of the upper nobility, and the fallen have been coming to the Kurtmurga kingdom. Is it all right? The Ice Wolf Emperor will not interfere with the boy who fled from the former nobility. As for Mayor Barrel Village, organize an investigation committee and find the labyrinth. This inn? Is this the place Rumi recommended? Yea. It's the White Labyrinth Flower Cottage. Let's go in. The inn that Ashley had brought me to was distinctive. It had three stories, white walls of masonry, and stone floors. We went inside and immediately in the front were the reception desks made of wood. There was a auntie sat down at the desk with a cute smile. Welcome. Would you like to have a meal? Or would you like lodging? Or perhaps... Good evening, Milana San. Ara. Young Lady Ashley, welcome. Would you like a meal? Yes. Also, please stop saying young lady. And I would like a meal and a room, please. Yes, yes. Lodging with a meal is 1,500 ol. One week will be 10,000 ol and one month will be 40,000 ol due to discounts. One month was quite a discount. Because I only have 55,000 ol. Then, one week please. Yes, you are in room 203. 
breakfast is between the 6-9 bells in the morning and dinner is between the 18-21 bells in the evening. In the morning at 7 o'clock, the wash water will be warmed and again at 19 o'clock for wiping. Okay, please, take care, of me, thank, you. So, let's go eat. The uncle here's cooking is very tasty. Landlady, when the money is paid to Milana, we received the key and went to the dining room on the first floor. The dinner served in the dining room was certainly delicious. In this alien world, reminiscent of medieval Europe, in both building and in culture, though it is unlikely that the spices that were so valuable at that time would be valuable in this different world. There were many spices, including pepper and sugar. Perhaps, the level of the cooking skill of this inn's chef is high. But regardless, future meals at this inn may become what I look forward to every day. Ashley and I had not had a decent meal since leaving Mayor Burrell Village in the early morning. And she quickly finished her meal in silence. Ashley doesn't seem to talk too much during a meal, and just watches while munching silently, smiling when she took a bite. Artilda, it's pretty late. Remy Senpai, thank you for your work today. I'm sorry. Black Sun and I have already finished eating. Must be tired, you look. What well, can't be helped? I'll just eat alone. Ashley. Return to the dormitory. First, we'll be re-investigating the area around Mayor Arrow Village tomorrow. Tomorrow? The director's decisions are always... Well, after all, it is a labyrinth. I am sorry that I invite you during a meal, Black Kun. Going to Mayor Arrow Village will be a hassle tomorrow. So rest tonight, you must be tired. The new, investigation, take care. Rumi and Ashley were going to Mayor Arrow Village tomorrow, and I must raise my guild rank and make money, though for the time being I will relax and inspect the VMB system I brought into this world. Knock knock. Ashley. Are you up yet? Yes. Rumi Senpai preparing for our departure will take a bit of time. I see, so, how was it? Black San, he registered himself as an adventurer without problem. Perhaps I'm just a bit hesitant to say, I went through the events that occurred at the General Guild while Black San was registering as an adventurer to Rumi Senpai. Rumi Senpai was also concerned about the information that showed up during the biometric information registration. Fumu, Ashley, you don't have to accompany the investigation group tomorrow. Instead, I went back to the room after dinner at the inn, and turned back to the TSS, the tactical support system. In order to continue work as an adventurer in this strange world, it all boils down to whether or not the VMB system will work or not, and I must ascertain this swiftly. As usual, management news and email are impossible, and log as as well. Avatar customization is possible, I verified this back in Mayor Barrel Village. After falling into this strange world, and lodging in this place which I had visited for the first time, I had a strong feeling to urinate and went into a frenzy. Must pee, it's because I don't know how to take off the power suit. It was a one-piece suit, and I couldn't find either a zipper or eject button. There was no feeling to urinate within the game so there was no reason to have to take off. Something you don't have to. I reeled and twisted, turned and squirmed, all the while navigating the TSS to the avatar customization menu. Avatar customization was a feature allowing the changing of the design of the power suit. A player could also change the avatar's hair or clothes, and there were even costumes distributed during events or sold as paid items. So it was not only limited to the power suit, and wearing no underwear was possible too. You could say that this feature was the only reason I succeeded in taking off the power suit, and I, a 24-year-old male, avoided disgrace. Modification of equipment and supplement of ammunition should be possible. But it ends there. I planned on replenishing my ammunition and changing out my secondary in order for tomorrow's plans. Compared to the M1911A1, the FN57 had more bullets per magazine. The M1911A1 only had 7, whereas the 57 had 20. 
It is an excellent handgun with superior penetration, using a 7x28 bullet. I selected the 5.7 and 3 magazines, and particles of light gathered before me. They congregated into a single point, and when the light faded, a black supply box appeared in its place. The appearance of the supple box and the whole particle shenanigans didn't change from inside the game. When I opened the box, there lay the 5-7 and the 3 magazines I had chosen. I retrieved the MP5A4 and the M1911A1, which I substituted for the original contents which I took out. I closed the box, and it disappeared with dispersing particles of light that dissipated as if nothing had happened in that spot prior to me being here. From the TSS, I verified the items and equipment was all in order through the inventory, and there they were, added into the item box-like place. Good, returning to the inventory. Now that I've confirmed a way to replenish ammo, today we're sleeping in. I removed all of my equipment and, through the avatar customization menu, stripped down to my underwear and dived into my bed, completing the night of day two in this world. Knock knock. Customer San. Are you awake? What time is it? Probably morning. This was the voice of Milana's landlady. Hi. I'm up. Good morning. Black Sama. Hot water and a washcloth is available by the bucket near the barrel, and after you finish washing, you should eat breakfast because it is already seven o'clock. Thank you. I'll go wash my face and then eat. Since there was already hot water, I went along with it and washed my face, and there was delicious food at this inn, and the service was impeccable. I am lucky that Remy recommended this place. I intend to continue my operations based here, buying equipment backslash and handling daily necessities and requests in various ways, but the money I have on hand is not reliable. So I will probably have Milana introduce me to some good shops later. Breakfast had a light morning specific menu. The standard in this world was two meals, one in the morning, and one in the evening. Though the amount in breakfast was rather plentiful. I wasn't familiar with the diet and thought this, enjoying the relaxing after meal atmosphere, until Ashley came in from the front. Good morning. Ashley, aren't you leaving for Mayor Barrel Village today? Morning. Black San. You're starting to speak Orlando very well, and it's much more natural too. Your learning speed is really amazing. Oh, that is because I continue to hear the words in both Orlando and the translated sentences, which are also displayed in deep blue. Thank you, though I might be a bit awkward and clumsy, and if it does not inconvenience you too much. Would you go shopping for swords with me? Is that so? I am accompanying an investigation committee to Mayor Barrel Village, but there is a two-day rest because the apprentices need to rest. So, what are your plans for today? Black San. Guys, he did it. Plans? Well, I'm probably going to buy some daily necessities and some equipment for when I go take requests. Is that so? Do you want to go together? This city is very large, and by the time you find the shop selling the things you want, it will already be dark. I will guide you to the shops you want to find. Thank you, I am grateful for your help. Then, I will go to my room to prepare. I immediately went back to the room and changed into the Marine Corps military jacket and pants through the avatar customization menu. I included the 5-7 in a holster and a magazine belt with the magazines inside, before leaving to shop with Ashley. So, what do you want to go buy first? Today Ashley, rather than her leather armor, was wearing a one-piece turtleneck dress with a leather belt and pants. Ah, was this a date? No, no, this is probably different, maybe. Well, I want to buy daily necessities first, then look for equipment. Yes. Let's go to the convenience store first, then, the manager's a nice dwarf lady. After she said this, I was guided to the convenience store. Perhaps the aunt thought we were preparing to live together? Perhaps that is why her face was flushed a deep red, as was the man selling us and other adventurers skewers of mysterious meat at a street side stall that was spit roasted. This was the perfect date. Zero and the store we were currently at sold tools to adventurers. 
There was a lot of adventurers in the shop, which was quite large. People were negotiating and inquiring about the price of commodities. What kind of tools do you want to buy? I need tools for removing proof of suppression and subjugation and bag for them. When you go to Mayor Arrow Village, I'll need one. Yours was pretty well designed. It fit into the armor, though. The size doesn't really matter. A, eh? a tool bag? Can Black San use it? A, eh? a, eh? involuntarily said A. Eh? Though Ashley also made the same noise. So it seems it's about the bag. So did I need some skill to use it? I'm sorry Ashley, I haven't used one up until this point, but are there any skills necessary for using the tool bag? When she heard this she seemed hesitant to say something, and averted her eyes, and seemed puzzled. Oi, Nichan, you came to an adventurer's store and you don't know how to use a tool bag? While waiting for a reply from Ashley I heard a deep voice from behind. When I looked back to find the source of the voice, there was a tall creature about two meters in height, with what looked like fake cat ears on its head. No. They had to be attached. There was a rat-faced guy and raccoon-like guy that followed behind him. It was probably an adventurer party. FN57. This handgun was developed by FN in Belgium. With a 20-round magazine utilizing 5.7 by 20 mm ammunition, with excellent penetration. At the store where adventurer equipment is sold, I asked Ashley for a tool bag. The bag can hold objects whose volume is larger than the bag itself, and is a classic example of an item appearing in young adult fantasy novels. Hey, Nichan, you came to a store for adventurers, yet you don't even know how to use the tool bag. He had cat ears, but the large man's voice was deep and loud, not cute at all and the cat-eared giant took his small cloth bag that had been lined up on the counter and threw it lightly to me. Come on. It's a tool bag. It will open the storage space if you just put in a little bit of magic. You're an adventurer, right? Can you do it? I caught the bag and the mouth of it hung open, though the storage space didn't seem to be as well, because I could see the cloth bottom. I guess that means I need to put magic into it. How do I do that? Surely I should be able to, but neither my original world nor VMB had such a thing. Would I even be able to use it? N? What's wrong? Don't tell me. You don't know how to use magic? No. It's probably that you are just stupid. Ashley seemed to be upset by this and opens her eyes wide. She pulls on my sleeve to indicate we should leave this place. Kawai I des you. I don't know what is wrong with this cat-eared giant. I don't know how to use magic and he simply declares that I am an idiot. Gawaih. This is probably the first time I've seen a bastard as stupid as you. Truly the first time. What an idiot. Yes. This is the first time, leader. Although they can be an adventurer with motivation. An idiot isn't useful. They'll just get their fellow adventurers killed. Oi, oi. What is with this course of events? I had something before about stupid. But what are they saying? I can't understand what this threesome is laughing at. Ignorant, stupid and foolish, and didn't know how to use the tool bag is what they said. But I just don't know how to use the tool bag. And I'll kill my fellow companions with my incompetence? My mind was full of questions. But I was brought back to reality by Ashley tugging on my sleeve. Ashley grasped on my sleeve and pulled it while trembling. You guys. Come on. Even without magic, Black San has the power to fight. He isn't incompetent. Ha! Huh? What did you say, young lady? You're the stunts' party member? It must be difficult. Having to take care of him and do all of the work. How about you leave this blockhead and join my party? Break up with this stupid bastard. This stupid bastard can't satisfy you at night? Gah! That's a good idea. Leader's body strengthening skills are enough to fight an orc. Of course it is. Leader is way more competent than this magic less idiot. I refuse. Black is way more competent than you, and there is no need to leave. R. Perhaps, she isn't trembling in fear, but anger? In addition, to insult someone simply for having no magical power? It's just so. Huh? What did you say? You can't see that I am more reliable. Hey, 
dance. Let's go outside. Senpai will teach you a little something about magic. If you lose, I'll be teaching this young lady all night. Ha this kind of thing didn't happen at the general guild. People trying to assault me. Then again, this is a different world. Stop mumbling. Come with me. Ashley, the cat-eared giant, and I left the store and went off the main street to a side road. I became aware of the rat and badger-faced guys behind us, likely to keep us from escaping. After walking for a little, the cat-eared giant stopped and turned around. This place is good, don't use any weapons and kill this nuisance, we won't get in trouble. In other words, you want to say it isn't a crime if it's just injuries? Ashley, in this city, if you hurt an opponent in a fight, what happens? If adventurers, commoners and craftsmen fight, the adventurer gets punished. But if adventurers kill each other, it is almost ignored. Ashley returned an answer in a low voice. Sorry for the inconvenience. Come on, you stupid bastard. What do you think you're doing? Don't you think it's time you stopped relying on others? The cat-eared giant spread his hands in a pose that said bring it on. Is this a hallucination? His eyes glowed red and his giant body swelled. I wonder if this is that body enhancement magic. What to do now? To be honest, I am just a simple FPS player. I didn't go to a gym or do martial arts and have some special skill passed down like some secret grappling technique. I have never even fought in my original world. I wasn't a tall child, and had little physical strength, so I wasn't good at ball games or at athletics and sports. The cat-eared giant already said they wouldn't use weapons but I don't think I could beat the man in a battle of fists. Then again, just because he said he wouldn't use one doesn't mean I can't. I plan to end this fast quickly. I pull the 5-7 out of the holster and switch off the safety, and then swiftly shot both of the cat-eared giant knees. The recoil from shooting from the shoulder wasn't that much, and with both knees destroyed, the cat-eared giant fell to the ground with intense pain. Behind me. The rat and badger-faced guys rushed over towards the cat-eared giant. I-D-E-E-E, -E -E. too disappointing. It seems to be missing magic, but was able to penetrate the knee. Why you? What did you? Adventurers don't expose their tricks that easily. Then, Ashley, shall we return to continue shopping with this kind of atmosphere? I think it wouldn't be a good idea. If there is still time, how about we go have dinner together? I used a light tone and left the alleyway, leading Ashley along. This time, for certain, it was the longer-awaited date-like atmosphere, and I hoped to end it with dinner. After being in the adventurer's tool shop and being carried away, then firing the 5-7, I left quickly in order to avoid people who would either connect the two events, and or follow the noise. While inviting Ashley to dinner. We decided to return to the White Labyrinth Flower Cottage. To be honest, I would like to go to the rice hose, but with my present funds, and the fact that there may be no rice houses. While eating dinner at the White Labyrinth Flower Cottage, Ashley said not a single word. From sharing several meals, I could tell she wasn't someone who talked during a meal. But with this atmosphere, such a thing, Black San. I want to talk to you a little. Ashley said this while we finished the meal and enjoyed drinking the fruit juice that had been placed on the table. Of course you can, I don't mind. What is the matter about those adventurers we came across earlier who called you an idiot, Manuk? It can also mean someone who has no magic. Ma equals magic nuke equals not present. Manuk? What's that? Ma also means devil. And nuke can mean a mission and the kanji is also used in ejaculate. Yes, my nuke, it is something that is extremely rare to find, and it means someone who is unable to absorb magic from the outside. Skills involving magic become impossible to obtain. Magic power dwells in not only people who absorb it from the world, but all people and things present in this world. This table and the road both have magic. Even the sky is full of magic. I don't know what kind of place Black San has lived, but in the Kurt Murga Kingdom, magic is used in all sorts of places and in various equipment. 
However the Manuk cannot make use of them at all. I understand Black Sand's fighting ability, but to continue living here will vary. Ashley then cast her gaze downwards. Indeed, I certainly was not born in this world, and as I felt to hear, brought along with me the power of VMB. The fact that I have no magic is no excuse. I am a foreign alien in this world. In this world, I'm not only a foreign object. FN57. This handgun was developed by FN in Belgium. With a 20 round magazine utilizing 5.7 by 20 mm ammunition, with excellent penetration. After finishing dinner at the White Labyrinth Flower Cottage, I was told by Ashley about the Marnuk those without magic power who are not accepted in this world and shunned, although this is the only evidence to this, I have come across so far, in this strange world, I am a foreign body, and I may be rejected, however, without a doubt, this woman before me is willing to accept me, in this last few days, we have come to properly understand each other, that I am certain of, Ashley, do you remember what I wrote when I registered at an adventurer? That you said putting only black was fine. And you had to write it for me? Eh? Yeah. I remember. Well. My name wasn't recorded as black, but as black powder. Black powder. Powder. Although I have both a first name and a last name, I'm not a noble from anywhere. Nor part of the imperial family. One. And. Us powder. It's outhouse. The powder house. That can't use magic. Up until now. I haven't witnessed, felt or touched magic, that is the kind of place I have lived in. Therefore, living here would not be an inconvenience. In addition, I have this saying that. I lifted the 5-7 out of the shoulder holster and held it in front of me. I left the safety engaged and put it down on the table, then continued to talk. This is the 5-7. In addition, I have several others but arms are a general term. This, those that have or could get their hands on these, it's probably limited to just those of the powder house. Even without magic, with the power of arms, I can live and fight. I will be alright. Arms? I have never heard of them, but may I touch? Sure, go ahead. There's no danger. Ashley extended her hand towards it timidly and attempted to lift it, but as soon as she touched it, it dispersed into particles of light and vanished. A, eh? The 5-7 is gone? What does this mean? This. This is a bloodline skill. Bloodline skills? Did I misunderstand something? How should I deceive her? Yes. It's a bloodline skill. Arms. Probably because of this skill, I don't have magic. Wow, a family that has bloodline skills, in the Orlando continent. Even within the countless countries there are only a handful of families with them. Even in the Kurt Murga kingdom there's only the imperial family. Are you sure you aren't royalty? It's different, really. I, this body has neither a country nor village to which it can return. I hope that this decision is not yet final, but, is that so? I'm sorry. I was just a little relieved. Those without magic, the Manuk. I have had go through much discrimination and difficulty, and I have come across several such people in the past, but for them to have gone through such hardship and keep living is even more difficult. But, Black San, if you're okay with it, well, I will also help you. So if you need anything, please tell me. Thank you. You are already helping me, Ashley. I am very grateful for that. I seem to have been able to successfully fool her and listened story of the Marnuke, I responded to her, so as not to worry her, and even if it was a lie, I didn't want to see Ashley with a worried or uneasy expression on her face, well, it might not all be a lie, the power of VMB may have been converted into a bloodline skill, or may have already been one, though it is quite a cheat, I became aware that while we were having a good time, there was no one around us, and realized that the meal was now over. That was a considerably long talk. So, shall I see you to your lodgings? Thank you. In that way, I enjoyed the walk at night after a meal, while taking Ashley to the dormitory for the guild staff within the general guild's compound. The next day, 
In order to receive a new request as an adventurer, I had come to the building of the General Guild. Bulletin boards were located within the building, and I looked for E-ranked requests, which had a large variety of different ones. They ranged from the collections of medicinal plants and minerals, and subjugation of demonic beasts who had been attracted by the magic of the labyrinth, to escorting people to other cities and villages within Barga, and various merchant requests. Now, which should I take? Unless I earn two years worth of taxes within the next three months. I have almost no money left after yesterday's shopping, so I first must make money to afford the cost of living. I peruse the reward amounts and the achievement conditions of each requests, but it seems that they have little direct danger, and I won't even need to consume ammunition or use my firearms to complete them. But I still have no means to increase CP, so I have to find a way to either increase it or make money without decreasing it. I have a feeling that the tool bag is the main deciding factor on the quantity requirement for collection requests. The reward changes based on the quantity collected, but with the stock tool bag, it doesn't seem possible to be able to make a great amount of money. My eyes naturally gravitate towards the demonic beast subjugation requests. There are higher rewards and fewer time restraints. Glass Wolf Suppression Black Wolf was attacked when they came towards Barga near the labyrinth in the East Woods. Suppression Proof Fang Quantity Five or more. Ten silver for completion, one silver for every additional fang, and fifteen guild points. When I saw this, the reward for the goblin mage didn't seem abnormal. Could it be that they were a strong sub race? I took the glass wolf hunting request and went to the reception desk, and presented it along with my guild card. The receptionist at the desk accepted it, and when she was done, she returned my guild card and said, have a nice day. Please be careful. The girl's age was considerably excellent, and also her personality. After leaving the general guild, I headed towards the horse-drawn carriage station. In Barga, carriages appear traveling to and from the labyrinths early in the morning to about noon. The map of Barga had hardly been filled at all, and I couldn't understand the part of the map over the labyrinth to the east. Though I had little money on hand, I decided to ride a horse-drawn carriage. The carriage was a large wagon with an attached top that shook terribly. After being shaken in the carriage for about an hour, it stopped. We were on the road, and to the east I could see the forest where the labyrinth was. Customer San, if you look to the east, we have arrived. Thank you. Are you sure the labyrinth is in that forest? Yes, in that forest is the labyrinth of the east. The labyrinth of the fanged wolf. If you walk in that direction you will find it. I paid the coachman and then moved across the street towards the east forest. After traveling a little ways into the woods, I activated the TSS and selected my main weapon. This time, I took MP5A4 with three magazines, and summoned the supple Lee box. It was possible in the inter summon my weaponry due to the fact that I was alone in a room out of the way. But to avoid attention and unnecessary inquiry, I had so summoned it here at the last minute. I saw some adventurers in town wearing a coat. I wonder if I could try to hide a gun in one of those. While I murmured this, I turned the safety off and set it to three bullet burst. I followed the road that branched off towards the labyrinth and entered the forest. I started searching for the glass wolves, and within approximately thirty minutes, I heard footsteps and running through the earphones attached to the googles. Surely, those were the footsteps of a glass wolf, or are there two? I wasn't sure yet, and it didn't appear on the map, but I had certainly heard them. In FPS games, recognizing the diverse sounds of enemies over the distracting sound of the environment is extremely difficult and is a sign of one growing into an experienced player from a beginner. It is an essential technique for playing such games, movement and footsteps, whispers, the sound of empty clips being ejected and replaced. The sounds of these all aid in telling the direction and distance, and can help create advantageous situations for oneself. This is the powerful charm of the FPS genre. It doesn't sound like running 
probably walking. An assault from the rear. As I listen, I should be cautious of other parties in the area. If it's a wolf it will have a good sense of smell. Of course I should try to keep the sound as low as possible, but I won't have to care about smell due to the direction of the wind. However, I don't know if I am the best judge of this, because this is the first time I've gone hunting. I don't know how well the wind will mask my smell. Now. I should focus on attacking from the rear. On the map appears two dots of light. The radar in VMB has a maximum range of 150 meters and shows location and proximity with a glowing dot on the screen, in relation to the center. However, the sound range was much larger, and can pick up sound 300 to 500 meters away. There was no formal distance and the range was discovered by players who investigated the topic independently. Based on the fact that knowing the whereabouts of other players would ruin the competitiveness of the game, the radar range was dictated in order to retain balance. There it was, a large, 1.5 meters long dog-shaped glass wolf. After confirming that this is the same beast I had killed no long ago, I came to a knee about 100 meters from it. I put the crosshair over the glass wolf and set up my stance, then pulled the trigger once. Three bullets left the MP5A4, and hit the joint of the wolf's hind leg, which proceeded to buckle and collapse under the wolf's weight. Verifying I hit the mark, I moved on to the next wolf and trained the crosshair on it. Already, one of the glass wolves was surprised by the sudden collapse of its companion and became cautious taking a bit of distance and looking around warily. Hitting it in the head could result in the destruction or loss of the fangs, so I aim a bit lower, at the neck, and pull the trigger. Did I hit it? The wolf fell back in reaction to the impact and collapsed. Keeping the crosshairs stationary on the glass wolf, I cautiously approached. I was still listening to the surroundings and checking the map. If I am too focused on the wolves, the loud sound of gunfire could attract other demonic beasts who could attack me while I'm distracted. And that would be foolish. The two wolves were no longer making any noise, and no longer were reflected on the map as glowing points. After verifying that they were dead, I stripped them of their fangs. Maybe the biggest fang would be best? How do I take it out? Should I pull it out? I grabbed the mouth of the close wolf and opened it then grabbed and pulled at its fang. With great effort, I was able to overcome the resistance and extract it. I dropped it into a bag hanging at my waist. I pulled out the other in the same way, and succeeded in the collection of the first two. Phew, I wonder if I can continue on in this way. Then I continued hunting for three hours, eating some dried meat halfway through without stopping for a lunch break or rest. When I checked the time, my goggles said it was past 1500 hours. 3 o'clock. I don't know what time the carriage returns, but it will be night soon. And the sun may set before I return. I decided to return to Baga. I had hunted six wolves, including those that I killed in the first attack. Yet I still hadn't seen the entrance to the labyrinth. Going there would be a waste of time as the adventurers who go into the labyrinth would hunt glass wolves in the area surrounding the entrance. I returned to the highway and began to walk towards the walls of Baga. From today's hunting I understand that, for the punitive system, searching for the enemy takes too much time. If this was a game, I was walking back and forth within a small map to find and hunt enemies. However, to look for prey, there surely must be some specialty knowledge, that I don't have. One would have to examine the glass wolf's psychology and know their activities and behavioral patterns. I had nearly no knowledge of how to hunt animals in the woods no knowledge of the flora and fauna living in this world. But I can't become an adventurer if I can't kill a glass wolf. It's a great occupation. No, wait. What about the labyrinth? If I hunt there I will need to know things such as the ecology and the environments. In the labyrinth, specific knowledge is required. I intently walk towards where the road into the east forest meets the highway, which connects Baga and the imperial city. I advance towards Baga, and can faintly hear the footsteps of a glass wolf, 
and also the sound of a carriage turning around to face the sound. I could see it considerably far off in the distance, from the imperial city came a single horse-drawn carriage. The sound of glass wolves running was about 500 meters from the back, is that carriage. Being attacked, it seems my first request hasn't ended just yet. Equipment MP5A4 German-made Heckler and Koch submachine gun. Now the most used submachine gun in the world, with many variations. There are many different applications, from military to police and anti-terrorist forces. Traitor is a note, start of novelization TL group translation TL note, I'll be using Schwartz as the MC's name instead of Black in the previous translations of Durasama and Jagaima because the author used the German word for Black, Schubratsu. Hey, the adventurer there, run away to, riding the coachman seat. A little roundish silhouette of an uncle, he shouts towards me who is ahead to where the carriage runs, the number of glass wolf who are chasing the carriage is five. So I guess, the rhythm of the sound though being the same, the feeling of the weight differs from the one that is emitted, please go ahead. When I shout that much, I set up my MP5A4 in a knee stand as I look at the rear side of the carriage, there is a huge glass wolf. Is it a high ranking kind? Watch out. It's a dire glass wolf, shouted the old man sitting on the driver's seat of the carriage, at the moment he ran through by my side. Dire glass wolf, high ranking kind still, a body bigger than the usual glass wolf, it exceeds the length of two meters. I fired in three bullet burst at the lead glass wolf. First of all, Kyan, it's not possible to imagine because of the glass wolf's appearance, a scream similar as a dog rose, the lead rolling glass wolf, stopped moving, the dire glass wolf who saw it barked once, the remaining four decided to aim at me, spreading from the highway, trying to encircle me, to avoid being encircled, I began to run to the right at once toward a glass wolf, the others are Leo this way coming near to here, while running toward the nearest glass wolf lining up the crosshair, I take a stance with the gun at my waist, in hip fire, shooting one bullet then shooting two, though one target was removed, I adjust a second one still rolling, however, fundamentally the glass wolf's speed is faster than mine, with a powered suit, though my leg strength is far faster than the standard of this world, still it's not faster than the wolf group, the dire glass wolf took some distance, it seems to look on the state of the hunt. Three remain, one draws near with a jump stretching its fangs, the three sensed behind, when checking it visually while turning slightly around. I break into the bad situation in a dash, to make the best use of the performance of the powered suit I change to high mobility and movement. I step in forcefully as it is and jump to the left front while looking back at the same time, setting up the safety device of the gun on full auto, in the left front and with the inertia jump in the air, matching the glass wolf approaching and the crosshair, I pull the trigger, the sound of the consecutive firing shots changes into the roaring sound, from a dot to a line various bullets swallowed two glass wolf, then landing vigorously as it is, to the right side front I move and jump again. There's one left on the middle, turning my line of sight to the left, matching the crosshair to the glass wolf without pausing I pull out the trigger, can I still do it? That jump, a technique made to seem natural in the game called VMB, there were mutters of confirmation of its reproduction even so in the real world. That jump, the axle jump, also called the circle jump, the ultimate most effective move also called strife jump using the acceleration of the movement speed according to game specification and movement point of view with higher speed longer jump technique the one closest to the technique reproducible in the vmb was similarly called strife jump with this high mobile move instead of fps ending in a long range firearms match avoiding bullets slipping through sometimes bringing forth gunfight at close range, when jumping over and nearing the enemy, VMB wasn't just a FPS with a direct gunfight, 
it became an evolved stage with five glass wolf down and the remaining dire glass wolf being cautious, I replace the emptied magazines, then the empty magazines thrown away become particles of light and disappear before falling on the ground, it's five companions guild, the dire glass wolf opens wide its eyes while bearing its huge canines, ruffling its fur and glaring this way, I judged that I should make a preemptive attack attack while there's some distance, took a standing shooting stance and peeked through the sight, matching the crosshair and setting on full auto, as I fired five shots, however the dire glass wolf leapt on the side, quickly evading, it avoided who? if so what to do, even shooting from the front, since it sees as there's some distance it evades, did the opponent's stance break, I decided there's nothing but thrusting into that gap, now let's see how far can I get close and if it evades, advancing and stepping in a little in an instant the dire glass wolf opens its big mouth more and more, facing over here as its mouth raises a roar, now, its mouth seemed for a moment to shine pale green light, it released a shot over here with a thunderous roar, I jumped to the side and succeeded evading it while rolling, when checking the front, the dire glass wolf has already running over here, I somehow merely returned into a half rising stance, the dire glass wolf already had approached in front of me, swinging downward its right claw, you -oo -oo. I grasped my MP5A4 in my left arm, raising it at the same time overhead as if to repel the dire glass wolf right claw, and push a button in the base of my gauntlet index finger, while pushing the button of my gauntlet, another element why VMB doesn't end because of long range gunfight, the circle barrier shield, CBS, has been deployed, a round energy shield of an energy consumption type, with a diameter from the fist to the elbow. This CPS is able to stop all attacks in VMB. However, the energy dries up at once when continuously deployed, so with a high CP consumption, reusing it is impossible unless waiting cool time to end or using replenishing items to remove the sure line of fire shot of the VMB jump technique. This shield was deployed over a short interval. It was a general technique to prevent being shot, deployed from my left arm, a pale shining invisible shield brushed off the right claw of the dire glass wolf, though the CPS repellents of the opponent's strike it seems it didn't understand what happened, because it was a common counter action in VMB PV mode although breaking the shooting posture, I can't overlook such a chance, great, its right claw repelled, the dire glass wolf spelly right before me became defenseless. I shot one handed pulling the trigger with my right hand. The MP5A4 spouts fire before the belly that receives 9x19 Purabim bullet. I keep on firing into the dire glass wolf until it collapses. It will become surely an overkill here after magazine are emptied. I didn't yet grasp its life ran out. Together with the sound I sensed a thick and heavy feeling, the dire glass wolf was dead. Phew, though it was good because of the shield protection, I could withstand this guy's power but it was dangerous. While looking down at the collapsed immobile dire glass wolf, I replaced the magazines. With this, spare magazine consumed, the earlier five ones killed included, none seemed to be moving anymore. However, that roar a little while ago, that surprised me, the superior kind can use naturally offensive magic like, the dire glass wolf's roar, a mass of magical power held onto the impact ground, imagine that power, the ground has been gouged, to the point of forming a crater, well, the carriage a little while ago ran away quickly, when turning my gaze towards city fortress Barga, I see from a long distance one carriage coming this way, before long, driving sounds can be heard too, that chased carriage, did it return, boy, are you safe, as I saw from a distance I was worried, are you injured, since I have medicine, no, I'm not hurt, is the uncle also alright, no injuries, a, 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 I am alright, I was saved thanks to you, as I was on the way from the royal capital to city fortress Barga, I was unexpectedly attacked by glass wolf, 
Since magic beasts don't usually appear in the vicinity of the highway the guard got careless too, I really was saved. Well, in that situation, I became the target. The sparks that had fallen onto me were paid. No, no, however. Killing a dire glass wolf while unhurt while talking to the old man in the driver's seat. I pulled out the combat knife from my leg sheath on my thigh. I thrust it into the dire glass wolf's chest, cutting through it. Blood isn't spouting out as I thought, as I was removing the demon magic stone buried inside that appeared still warm. I hear Ashley's yesterday lecture, superior material of subrace magic beasts. In the natural world, demons using magic possess a magic stone in their chest. Ha <laughs> ha. A magic stone of wind of a wonderful size. I noticed the old man had come down by my side from the carriage. A magic stone of about 5 centimeters taken out shines in green. To me even without magic, I understand also with its radiance it possess some power sealed. I put the magic stone in my pouch, and pulled out the fangs of the glass wolf and dire glass wolf as subjugation proof. Is the dire type as good as any fang? Do I only need to collect the magic stone and the subjugation proof? The old man who was looking at the collection work, listened to the question thinking, can something more be collected? No, no. I too have a tool bag. It can't take any more. I don't have a tool bag. Though I can't use, I don't think necessary saying I'm a manuk, so I deceived him. It's a waste. There's no useless part in magic beasts. There's a use for skin, meat, and the bones too. Could I buy it in this place if you can't take it? I'm thankful. Please if it is possible to buy it after all I would simply throw it away. Ato. This is rude of me adventurer donor, not introducing to the one who rescued me. I am called Malta, a merchant. I manage the Marida firm, mainly in the king capital. Pleased to meet you Malta San. My name's Schwartz, I am still a beginner adventurer. I was thankful of the old man named Malta for its honest offer. For me who cannot use the tool bag. The amount of luggage I can hold is extremely insufficient. Even small firearms such as MP5A4 and the ammunition carried, excepting the subjugation proof collected there's little room left. Actually I should be the one to thank you. Schwartz San. First, let me do the retrieval to my tool bag. Then let's go towards Varga. We'll carry out the deal there while the day is set. Please, Schwartz San also should get on the carriage. We'll only decide general things while going towards it. And, I sit on Malta San's carriage, returning to the city fortress Bark the while deciding a quick amount of money for the trade. Equipment used MP5A4 Germany submachine gun made by the company Heckler & Koch. The most used submachine gun in the world. With also extraordinary numerous variations. Military forces, police and counter-terrorist units etc. A famous instrument playing a broad active role. Circle Barrier Shield CBS VMB Original Barrier Shield there is a deployment switch at the base of the left index finger, as long as energy is lasting. The circle shield shaped barrier stretches to prevent any attack in VMB. Consumed energy is recovered by natural recovery or time recovery items. When I returned to the city fortress Varga with Malta San, I went first to the guild reporting the completion of the request. About selling to Malta San the materials from the dire glass wolf and the like. I'll meet Malta San again at Marida's branch company tomorrow so we separated. When I entered the general guild annex in the evening, it overflowed with adventurers settling today's earnings there. Now lots of row, do I line up in a spot with short queue for the time being? Though there are two or more counters at the reception desk. I wonder why there's a difference in the rows lining up in the counters. I queued up in a random and long line too. There were counters where several people didn't line up too. My turn has turned while I was minding the next row. Seems like the one in charge of this counter is a fast working person. When turning towards the next counter I look over there. There was sitting a cute beast woman receptionist. 
As expected, speaking of guild receptionist and beauty, it's the pretty faction receptionist woman. After surviving life and death requests and searches, it is necessary to heal the mind and eyes. Thus by talking for a while, the raging mind is appeased by exchanging the life. TL, what the author meant here is about surviving after risking its own life in a guild request and when coming back to the counter to be healed by the vision of a beautiful receptionist. The cue next to me, the purpose of Miss Receptionist. I understand well that feeling, talking about one's adventures to the lovely receptionist, getting her admiration. Besides the request reward it seems that receiving this might be a hard to get reward. Thus the reception here. Welcome. Please come, I am receptionist Lesmond. Please show me your guild card and the written request. He was sitting there the other day. It was Lesmond San the small moustache old gentleman who appraised the goblin mages Obi. Oh. Was it Schwartz San? Welcome back, Lesmond San seems to have remembered me. The present me can be said to have an indescribable expression. I I R. Ah, this person never brings dissatisfaction, polite interaction, he has certain skill. He might be a splendid staff member. But, however, that sort of passion behind an expressionless outside, while Lesmond San checks my guild card and request. He operates the crystal pedestal with a stream-like elegance handling. I returned just now, today to the reception desks. While seeing his splendid work, I want to praise my willpower for returning me to normal. Yes, because this period of time is very crowded. I also am sitting here helping. The request is subjugation of glass wolf, subjugation proof please. Yes, eleven in all. And then I also hunted a dire glass wolf, with the fang matching too. To dear glass wolf's name, I felt the edges of Lesmond San's small moustache went up slightly, though I might have made a mistake. Lesmond San without breaking his gentle smile. The subjugation proofs are confirmed one by one, his movement stopped at the noticeably big fang of the dire glass wolf. Yes, diamond glass wolf is a similar fang. This is certainly a dire glass wolf, as expected. Schwartz San When encountering dire glass wolf in the nature, it is in a herd without exception. However Schwartz San doesn't seem to be injured by, as one would expect of a G rank who hunts goblin mage. Aha! I was able to simply aim at the small number of the herd by chance. Fufu, modesty. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. The completion of the request has been confirmed. Thank you for your effort. Remuneration in accordance is 16,000 O with 16 silver coins, and 15 guild points. Diaglass Wolf's subjugation proof, 25,000 O with 25 silver coins, and 200 guild point. Furthermore 1,600 O are taken for the tax collection of the current year. I will return the guild card. Tilda Adventurer Registration Card Tilda Name Schwartz Powder Age 24 Home VMB Main Weapon None Main Magic Attribute None Skill None Skill None Payment of Taxes Method Adventurer Remuneration Rank E 24500 Tilda Checking the Guild Card The Blood Skill Arms Made Up Yesterday Evening Wasn't Registered from the start the blood skill wasn't recorded, or that is so as I requested for it not to be recorded, or something like that. I received the reward, after parting with Lesmond San in the general guild I went towards the inn. After eating diner at the inn I went to my room at once. I checked the CP consumed for today's request. Even so, the consumption speed is fast. As it is I can hold one year or not. Currently. How will I use CP without a name of acquisition from now on? Investing it as if it grows on tree on ammunition replenishment and equipment purchase, though I saved a large amount of CP. I can't be relieved. Since by killing enemies crystal can't be obtained, I should also consider there's no alternative for it. Regarding this world I am here as a foreign substance. They're thinking over a good idea that had not come out. 
The only possibility is this magic stone. During my return from today's request, while touching the wind magic stone I harvested from the dire glass wolf I encountered by chance, the screen monitor of TSS from the gauntlet of the left arm was inactivated. I try to operate it like a tablet terminal. Resolutely no small firearms. There's not a lot of melee weapon gathered left, no. However an amateur may not understand the hair has grown with the level of technology. It's unreasonable hunting such things as magic beasts subrace. The answer doesn't emerge from the problem. It's useless no matter how much I touch the TSS. So I thought, when operating the TSS switched off, the wind magic stone touched by the right hand slips down from the fingers into the monitor screen of the TSS. It went into error. This crystal cannot be converted into points. Cancel conversion? Why n? What? The magic stone is also a crystal? I couldn't take my eyes off the error message on the screen monitor of the TSS. For now I choose cancellation of the conversion. The wind magic stone that sank in the screen monitor has fallen on the back side of the monitor. In other words I can convert magic stone by dropping it on the monitor. Am I able to get as many crystal as I can? I search in the pouch of the magazine belt, choosing another magic stone. I take out the no attribute magic stone collected on the goblin mage. I dropped it on the screen monitor. Conversion. This crystal will be converted into points? Why n? There. It was impossible with the wind magic stone. It's possible to convert a non-attribute? I convert it at once, and checked the number of acquired point. It is few, the number of points was about the amount for one magazine. Th. This. Though CP was certainly obtained, after all, it becomes minus if I thinks about the frequency to acquire magic stones. No. If I think about the replenishment of materials, not everything needs to be obtained directly. Or there's the way of buying and trading magic stones too, but won't it turn into a substantial amount of money then? Among the stories I heard Ashley San talking, there was a story about how making use of magic stones. Magic stones seem to support various life infrastructures in this other world. The energy source operates in the same way various magics. In other words, magic stones are like the electricity in my former world, the gas, or the fossil fuel. It is difficult to imagine an offer with a reasonable price actually. However here the fortress city of Varga is enclosed by a labyrinth. I see, the labyrinth. Ashley San said, in nature it is difficult to obtain magic stones. Reversely in labyrinths when killed magic beasts and even subraces disappear immediately absorbed in the labyrinth, and their core becomes a magic stone falling down there. In other words, the activity in the labyrinth plays a central part in gathering magic stones. I should become an explorer out of an adventurer, when promoted to D rank I'll immediately be promoted into one. It's necessary to obtain the authorization for entering the labyrinth. Thinking up there, I noticed the moment the date starting to change. I must go and see Malta San tomorrow. Above all to confirm the means to obtain CP, as the excitement hasn't lessened yet. Or do I go to sleep soon today? TL note, I decided to change demon beast to magic beast since I'm already using magic stone instead of demon stone. I received my first request as an adventurer and completed it the next day. I am in the business district spreading in south of the city fortress Varga. I came to the Marida branch company in Varga. While returning from yesterday's first request, since I unexpectedly rescued Malta San from a herd of magic beasts, I agreed on selling the corpses of the magic beasts. Malta's married a company faced the main street where the city fortress Varga's business district was running through. It was a big building three stories tall. When helping yesterday, traveling without an escort with the carriage, I thought it was a merchant of the peddling center. If this trading company building is a branch, it can be expected that the headquarters is a larger big trading company. The first floor of the trading company is selling armors and tools intended for the adventurers. Rather than a store selling various articles, they deal with high-level armor and items. 
There's an atmosphere similar to brand name shops aimed at experienced people. When I entered inside, a store employee has approached at once with a radiant smile. Welcome. What can I help you with today? E, is Malta San here? It's about the matter of the sales of raw materials of magic beasts we still have left. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for coming. I'll go and call him right away. Could you wait in the reception room? While going towards the reception room the employee gave me some guidance. When asking if this trading company was selling magic stones, it seems the Marida company is a trading company that originally started with magic stones trades. Magic stones were collected and brought back from various labyrinths transporting and carrying to place with there's demand for it. So performing together transportation and sales, to places with higher demand, selling cheaply, keeping on raising profits, soon it came to deal with goods other than magic stones. The company had grown up greatly. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Schwartz San. In the reception room the employee guided and left me. I listened to stories of the company while sipping tea I was served, and Malta entered the room while his plump stomach shook. No, since I got some delicious tea, did it suit your taste? Tea of eastern countries aren't easily obtained even in the royal capital. Come now, let's settle the business talk. Though Schwartz Sand killed five glass wolf and a dire glass wolf, there's few damage on every fur. So it was skinned very neat. Well. Though on the part of the belly there was only a hole in the dire. What kind of weapon, or magic did you use? Though such scars were never seen before. Though Maltasan had a smiling face till then, his eyes, the moment he made an allusion to weapons and magic, were shooting a sharp light. As a merchant he may be thinking of something profitable. However, he won't be able to understand even if I honestly explain it. Ah, well, that thing. It's a secret. I decided that I couldn't honestly say it, and frankly made it secret. This is harsh. No, even so I was rude. The secret of an adventurer's strength is his biggest asset. I shouldn't have asked such as to easily splurge it. Please forget it. Once again Malta's face was smiling again and gave out the impression of a gentleman. And, from the bag he carried when he entered the room. He began to take out the purchase money. Let's go and proceed. Glass wolf is three silver coins for one, though I would buy the dire for sixty silver coins. How about it? Yes, I have no problem with it. By the way Maltasan, I heard that Marida company is focused on carrying out magic stones trading. Yes, also my coming from the royal capital to Varga. The purpose is for buying magic stones. I heard of a rumor that a fourth labyrinth was discovered. If a new labyrinth is discovered, then the amount of transactions of magic stones will increase more and more in Varga too. It's a disqualification for a merchant if he fails to notice this business opportunity. Though I haven't entered the labyrinth yet, may I ask you the trading price of magic stones as reference? Yes, I don't mind. If it is Schwartz-san, you're likely to greatly play an active part in the labyrinth as soon as you enter it. And I heard the story of the magic stones from Malta-san, it will be of great use as a reference. However, since the story was long enough to last till lunch so I was treated to a feast, it became impossible to go and take a request today for magic stones, with the six basic attributes that are fire, water, wind, earth, darkness, and light, those combined called the four air attributes that are thunder, ice, wood, space, adding the non-attribute there are eleven attributes in total, there's variation with the kind of attribute imprinted due to the magic beast's core, furthermore, it becomes an energy source that runs the tool bag and the transfer device, as never empty magic stones of space attributes were taken from magic beasts and sub-race. It can only be found inside the labyrinth where it drops, it is said that it can't be acquired. Thus the actual value of the transaction is, basically many non-attribute are harvested because of a largely amount supplied. The price isn't that much, it seems also there are dealings by several silver coins for the six basic attributes. However, 
as the four air attributes can't be obtained easily, it's even more expensive because it can be acquired only by picking it up as empty magic stone. The price is also according to the size of the magic stone. There's extensive dealings from tens of silver coin to a gold coin. Hence, basically the price of magic stones changes easily. At a general guild too that has dealings in the lowest average price, it was strongly recommended to deal directly with a merchant like Malta San. The Marida company is strong. That's why it was strongly recommended, yet, back from today's negotiation, I checked at once the price of non-attribute magic stone. The sale money earned is of 75 silver coins inside, there's as many as 40 non-attribute magic stones bought. I returned to the hotel and I converted everything into CP. And by the next day I received the request centered on the subjugation system. Even though struggling hard hunting in nature with insufficient knowledge, guild points will still be saved little by little within the premises of the general guild. There's also a facility similar to a library called Archives. My one day's cycle, receiving early in the morning a request. I will achieve it by the afternoon and return to Varga. I'll stop by the archives after the completion report. Common sense in this different world and knowledge on magic beasts subraces are likely to turn out as target of collecting request. I gather knowledge of medical herbs and minerals, and I return to the hotel in the evening. I kept living like this. Well the archives, as one would expect of the information volume it can't be memorized normally. There it's not quit a trick. There's the screen capture function in the head goggle. By using it I began to save magic beasts picture books and medical herbs picture books one after another. This capture image, because it's possible to look at TSS at any time, it was greatly useful for checking the stuff gathered and the like on spot. And, after three weeks, I was reporting today's request achievement in the general guild annex. The receptionist is Lesman San this time too. Although there's many of Annex counters, the queue of the man's counter and the waiting time are short. Working politely, after all I get in line here every time. Thereupon a beautiful and lovely woman receptionist is nice if it admired from the side. Thank you. What should I do to take the promotion examination? Well, there's expectation for further activity of Schwartz Sama. With this after passing the examination I can enter the labyrinth. I can see approaching my way of life from now on. I renewed my thanks, and went toward their adventurer registration counter. At the general guild annex, I knew that I got the qualifications for the D-rank promotion test. I immediately enter the main building of the general guild and proceed to the adventurer registration reception counter, it's there that I was being taken in charge for my adventurer registration, and the elf Millimaria was sitting. Welcome to the general guild's branch of Varga of the Kurtmurga kingdom, oh you're, Schwartz San, wasn't it? Hello, Millimaria San. Saved up guild points increased at last. I request the application for the promotion test. Finally, how Schwartz San is. You're a manuk, isn't it? Finishing saving the guild points without one month passing yet. You know that I'm a manuk, right? Millimaria San, thereupon looking slightly embarrassed, when I did the adventurer registration, talked about what the crystal referred in the biometric record. That crystal, when copying biometric data into the guild card, first blink white then colored in accordance with the number and attribute of abilities and skills ones hold. I hear that it repeats the blinks. However, when my data were copied it only blinked once with basic data. From that long task Millimarius-an understood at once that from my magical power there's no magic coming out. Which reminds me. At that time Ashley-san and Millimaria were surprised with something. Therefore Ashley San noticed it too. It's that sort of reason, ma. However there's really no problem. Actually it's like this because I repeated and increased request achievement. Such thing right, still I'm honestly surprised. The reason being for Schwartz San to have that much of strength. Well then for I'm also the staff member responsible of the registration counter. 
I'll do my best to carry out my duties. However for the promotion test to D rank, the test subject is in the eastern forest of Barga's fortified city. You'll go towards the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth together with the examiner, and you'll have to travel the first underground floor and reach the second underground floor. Eh? Is that it? Schwartz-san, although it's the Labyrinth's first floor, it's by no means an easy place. Besides, this test, rather than a test of aptitude of D-rank, while adding a D-rank raising of status, it forces the way of a training like nuance for the sake of the requirements of a labyrinth explorer. I see, I understand now. And what does a typical schedule of the test sound like? It takes one day for preparations of an examiner. Please come to the General Guild main building the day after tomorrow in the morning. Also, in the level applied for the application test of D-rank raising of status, you'll be able to browse the materials related to the labyrinth at the archives. Since you'll return on the same day of the appointed day, preparations for camping aren't needed. Test begins after gathering necessary goods and tools for the labyrinth exploration such as food and so forth. Please, check up by yourself what you need. I understand. The day after tomorrow is it? Thanking Millimaria San. I left the General Guild main building and returned to the White Flower Pavilion of the Labyrinth. The next day preparing for tomorrow's test, I went first to the General Guild's grounds at the archives. These archives have three floors. There's an uncertain underground floor. And in the primarily floors above ground, various documents and books on nature are placed. In the uncertain underground floor it is said there's related data on the labyrinth. Related data on the labyrinth aren't generally open to the public, easily exploring for being sure one's life isn't hunted in the labyrinth. It seems they limit information, though the nature of the danger should be well known. Still there's many reckless adventurers that are eager for a challenge. A group of low rank made a reckless attempt in the past. It seems it wasn't able to suppress it after being excited by the labyrinth. Hence, basically they kept away general information concerning labyrinth, and also it's said that those who explore labyrinth are told not to make public information of easy labyrinth. However, those people are curious beings who want to know about these secrets, conversely the adventurer with interest in concealing aren't few either. For this type of fellow that becomes D rank there isn't also any restriction, rather say what is less than adventurers who also don't become D rank, turning into such typical position as privilege rank, those less than adventurer aiming at that privilege, for not less than D rank don't look down and keep awareness of the value of that privilege easily. The authorization for entering the underground floor for the D rank promotion test was left. Currently it was the opening of nothing but the space concerning the fundamental knowledge of the labyrinth's first floor underground. It seems other is opened after passing. Several books are brought to the reading space, necessary stuff for exploration, checking fundamental knowledge and so forth. I use the screen capture function of the head googles, and save with the capture the too many places I can't memorize. There was also the map of the first floor underground of the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth becoming the future test. Apart basic knowledge that was known in relation to the labyrinth, the area of each level changes to the extent of the labyrinth's growth. The labyrinth also exists for hundreds of years without being captured, the bottom layer's deep limits are not known. However it is said there's only 10 layers in newborn labyrinths. Passage width of labyrinths inside is 8-10 meters, with a small room in the way there's also a wide room exceeding 20 meters. Because there's basically no light in the passage, explorers always bring a kind of white light grass at the time of a labyrinth exploration, go and treat as only a job the thing of sowing seeds in dark place. The sown seeds grow with the labyrinth's magic. When the flowers bloom shining in white it brings light in the passage. Labyrinth's magic beasts and sub-races, since showing no interest in the white light grass, it's said it keeps on blooming and continues to absorb the magic. Magic beasts and sub-races in the labyrinth. 
The labyrinth creates it using magic power and a cause of magic stones, a kind of illusion. The labyrinth spits out magic ingredient in the nature, summoning magic beasts and sub-races in the surroundings, reading this information. It seems it creates the same one within the labyrinth because, in order to subjugate the labyrinth from the inside while destroying or collecting the large magical stone, in the labyrinth's surroundings a powerful seed must be gathered so that a superior kind should not be created. It's necessary to keep on subjugating it. Magic beasts and sub-races in nature can of course use raw material of corpses, Fundamentally when specimen of inside the labyrinth are defeated only magic stone are left behind. However, inside magic materials are thoroughly absorbed. The specimen it took hold are transformed becoming superior kind. Besides magic stones parts with high magic seems sometime to fall as drop item, that's a feature corner encountered, if living armors are summoned. From the moment it was created it carries a sword or a shield. Still, equipment and belongings of explorers that died within the labyrinth are also absorbed in it, that is sucking magic material of the labyrinth. It seems sometimes a spit out as magic items inside the labyrinth, and doesn't fall into the wayside. There happens to be in a large room inside of the labyrinth a pedestal. It seems to appear in a concealed passage inside a wayside shrine. Why do something like this appear? It's a mystery. Among researchers concerning labyrinth's predation target are common races and beasts races. It's said it's bait to draw people inside the labyrinth. It's said also it's a game. Life struggle of adventurers with the labyrinth. I don't feel strictly unrelated more than I thought. Murmuring so. I close the book I was reading and swiftly I remember that I am hungry. I was hungry. I'll go back and buy tools for tomorrow's aim. I'll equip for tomorrow's D rank promotion test. For today I should quickly go to bed. Going back a little in time, one week before Schwartz promotion taking place, Ashley had come to the General Guild in Mayor Barrel Village. Schwartz Powder Senior Remy, hearing the full name of Schwartz San has an expression just like me like having heard it. Yes. Inquiry by the office crest of the royal capital. As well as Kurt Murga Kingdom, received confirmation of noble lists from neighboring countries. But presently both royalty and titled nobility the powder house doesn't exist. I see. He didn't necessarily have fled from Bshuban Empire. Remy Senior was surprised only a little that her own thought was above all off the point. So where from comes Schwartz San? Before thinking about that question, there's a point that couldn't be reported yet. Well ma, a bloodline skill because of Manuk? However, we can leave him unattended as the general chief says that it can happen. Yet, with the investigation of the new labyrinth I discovered in the west of Mare Barrel Village, I can't afford to leave here, for Ashley continuously close to Schwartz to see how things are. And when there's something I ask to report it. Yes, I understand. But, he is in no way a bad person, rather. N? What? Did you fall in love? With a single word of Senior Rumi I opened my eyes wide. My face became exalted as if in fire. I felt oppressed as if my the inside of my chest tightened. However, I stared straight at Senior Rumi's smirking and smiling face. It's... It's wrong. It's not that sort of thing. Phew, for the sake of one unknown woman taken away into a goblin's den, a man that isn't an adventurer coming for help alone, I would end up falling in love in that case too. B. But, the me now is a general guild investigator. I'm an apprentice. I can't receive a request as an adventurer and travel together. Won't Schwartz be handling the requests? And there's the timing when you can go together. Th. That I understood what Senior Rumi was trying to say, the day I prepared for the return to the fortified city Barga from Mayor Barrel Village within the same day, to check the state of Schwartz's son at the General Guild, the appointed day of the promotion test, 
When going to the main building of the General Guild, Miller Maria San and Ashley San were waiting. Good morning Schwartz San. Ashley San was appointed as today's promotion test examiner. Please listen to the details of the test from her, with this excuse me since I have my normal duties. Saying so, Miller Maria San immediately went to the other side of the reception counter. When passing by Ashley San, my ear pads picked up her whispering do your best. There's something too for Ashley San with this test. Good morning Ashley San. My best regards today. Good morning Schwartz San. As the examiner of the D-rank promotion test today, please treat me well. Test contents are amounting to run the first floor underground here, reach the second floor underground, and to return to the fortified city barga. Fight ability inside the labyrinth and survival ability, ability to gather information and so forth, are evaluated in more than one aspect, and tested whether or not there's a problem as a labyrinth explorer, all my preparations are complete, Ashley San too says there's no problem, we then promptly went toward the labyrinth, I'm asked by Ashley San what you do for transportation? First riding on a tour carriage, I decided to go in front of the East Forest, Schwartz San. Did you prepare the map of the first floor underground of the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth? Yeah, at the archives I ask if I could read the basic information of the labyrinth, yesterday I went and checked it. Even if I say it's a map, is it all right with something of the level of a scribble? The map of the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth was drawn, yet how many years ago? Also Labyrinth's map doesn't change. When an explorer sells to the General Guild a Labyrinth's map he drew, also for an explorer that excelled in cartography, there were situations for requesting drawing up from the General Guild, however, in both cases, basically because it's drawn by the explorer's sense within the Labyrinth, it becomes distorted. In this other world, still measurement technique doesn't seem to truly make progress. Surely didn't also go for exploring the labyrinth, as craftsperson, still it says explorers possessing measurement skill are also nothing but negligible. While exchanging idle chat inside the tour carriage, they carried out the check of presence or absence and so forth of goods, tools, provisions for the labyrinth exploration due to Ashley. Well I won't fight in the labyrinth's first floor underground, if I'm attacked I'll deal with it. Basically Schwartz San will go and deal with it by himself, is that all right? Today's Ashley was wearing a leather armor like when we met the first time, she'll battle most likely when attacked, she was carrying a luggage bag that's considered as tool bag, and hasn't taken out arms. In these three weeks, I accepted many requests, I was outstanding going in many places displaying different apparent small arms powered suit and magazine belt, hence, nowadays above my usual equipment, with a new customized avatar I, configured, I was wearing a black Napoleon long coat, when I was playing VMB, yet I ignored this sort of image for fashion items that dress up an avatar that will collapse, in reality I also didn't go out with combat uniform anywhere. On the other hand I was anxious going out without carrying weapons. Also luckily because I could remove and install one long coat easily. When managing the TSS, I can take it off immediately in battle times, of course. But I would like to hear one thing, way of fighting and ability of the adventurer observed in the test. To what extent it is recorded and is the information shared in the guild? I think my way of fighting is a type considerably different and I don't want to spread it too much. Please be relieved there, because the result of the test is entrusted by an examiner. What is observed during the test isn't told to other guild members. Moreover, this D-rank promotion test isn't a test to drop, since it's close to training. It doesn't investigate too much deep, basically. Is it? I got it. I feel relieved. Getting off the tour carriage. We go towards the entrance of the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth walking on the highway. Situated in the middle of the East Forest is the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth. Even if we get off the carriages tour, from there it's even more necessary to walk not less than 30 minutes. With Ashley San, when advancing while having an idle chat not related with the test, 
At last the building managing the in and out of the labyrinth came into sight. The administrative building of the Wolf's Fang Labyrinth has appeared. First we'll carry out the exploration registration in there. Don't forget to buy there the white light grass seed. Well the labyrinth administrative building can control the ins and outs of explorers, and can carry out sorting of exploration schedules and labyrinth information. There's also rest areas and shops, selling restorative medicines and white light grass seeds. Taking the records of explorers who enter the labyrinth, from the number of explorers who passed away inside. It seems they can to some extent predict the periods magic beasts and sub-races overflows from the labyrinth. Ashley San and I submit the exploration plan of the test at the administrative building, and receive the exploration approval to the labyrinth through the check of the guild card, and we stepped forward an artificially opened large hole in the ground in the middle of the forest. The entrance of the labyrinth was a large cave on the side of an unnatural looking mountain with guards keeping watch around the entrance to deal with any monsters that could wander out. Ashley and I greeted the guards as we passed them on the way in. Inside the cave, we were greeted by the sight of many small bright white flowers that often grew in goblin dens. I kept note of it as we continued on through into a small room. Inside there were stairs leading down to the lower levels. Down these stairs is the first level of the labyrinth. You ready? Ashley stopped for a moment to check with me. I held for a moment as there were signs of others on the map. Using the TSS, I unequipped and stored my long coat. Keeping that this was a D rank promotional exam, I swapped out my H and K M P51 for an FNP92 submachine gun. The P90 is the 5.7's big brother, both made by FN Herstal Company. Its ergonomics are fairly great which make it easy to handle while employing FN 5.7x28 mm caliber rounds for, boasting exceptionally flat trajectory and armor piercing of level E ear Kevlar vests that stop other small calibers. Even though it's armor piercing, its ability to pass through a body is limited by design and even if I were to miss, it was also designed to limit ricocheting. This with its bullpup design made it must use in the labyrinth's narrow spaces since I want to avoid hitting other people as much as possible. After setting up the P90, I test out the sights by peeping in and returning, so forth. The integrated reflex sights were removed and in its place was iron sights 5. After confirming that there wasn't any discomfort in transitions, I took out a flashlight attachment and attached it to the P90. Then I took out two suppressors 6, from my waist pouch, attaching them to the P90 and 57. I returned my pistol to its holster on my waist. Ready, let's go, I said to Ashley who was smiling at how I was checking my equipment before we both headed down into the first level. As the name suggests, Wolf's Fang Labyrinth mainly had grass wolves and other monsters living in the forest to the east. The first floor's path was continually changing from 6 to 10 meters, so inside of walking side by side with Ashley, I decided to take point with Ashley watching the rear while keeping an eye on the surroundings. I detected movement coming up from a bend in the path further up. Ashley, back up a little. There seems to be a bend coming up and about three things coming towards us. R, yes. Please take care. From the sounds of the footsteps, it appeared to be a grass wolves. I switched the safety off, switching it to automatic, on the P90 with my finger while taking a knee and aimed it at the bend in the path that was about 20 meters ahead. After a few moments, the footsteps got louder and louder, then a wolf head popped into my sights. The moment my crosshairs aligned with its body, I pulled the trigger for a split moment, firing off around five shots. Then, a second and third one came around the bend, both quickly slid into my crosshairs and I pulled the trigger again. With the effect of the silencer, the concussive sound wasn't so loud and with that, our first fight in the labyrinth was only lasted a few seconds. 
Mr. Schwartz's skill is amazing. Beginners normally struggle with the grass wolves since they have a hard type fighting as a group in these confined spaces. If you fight this way, you can take them out before they even have a chance to reach you. Despite what she said, I didn't take my eyes off the wolves and still had my weapon aimed at their bodies that laid on the stone floor while I slowly approached them. As I approached them, their bodies began to be wrapped in a black fog and slowly faded only to leave behind three small mana stones where their bodies once were. Ah! Those mana stones have wind attributes. These sized stones are pretty great for me since I won't need a bigger bag and since these paths are narrow, it makes it hard for them to avoid my attacks. I think this labyrinth pretty great. While saying that, I collected the mana stones and put them in the bag hanging off my belt. Certainly an adventurer can make an incredible amount of money, especially for someone as strong as you, but you have to be aware that it's also extremely dangerous if you are by yourself. You could get injured with no one to help you and you'd never make it home. Well, there isn't anyone who's willing to part up with me and considering my fighting style. Having anyone who uses melee would only put themselves in danger. It's fine so please don't be anxious. I turned around to Ashley with a troubled smile. In the beginning, when I first arrived in this world, I didn't know anything else. So I thought, I'm sure there are other ways of life in this world, but with my skills, this is the only thing I can do for now. In this world though, it's not such a bad thing. Well. Let's keep going. Since we still need to finish the exam. Yes, that's right. Let's go on. We both wrapped up that awkward situation and continued on with the exam, keeping a lookout for more monsters and when we did, each time we detected them, we waited for them to approach us before I would wipe them out the moment they came into range then collect the dropped stones. Then when we about reached the center, we found a large room. Mr. Schwartz. Ahead in that large room, there should be around 10 demons. How do you plan to deal with them? Are there are demon beasts in this room? Is it true they won't attack unless you enter? Yeah, the monsters in there are resting rather than keeping guard of the pathways. Then that would mean there were high ranked monsters in there then. This level of the labyrinth, a passageway, and a large room. There didn't seem to be a lot of monsters in the end. But the large room would probably be a little tricky. In this situation, the best course of action would figure out how to reduce the difference in numbers. I have a tool I want to use, but it's loud so I ask that you cover your ears before I throw. When I throw it into the room, please don't look at it either or you'll go blind. Sound? How does it make a loud sound? What do you use it for? Well, to put it simply, it causes them to become disoriented and then we can swoop in and deal with them while they're panicked. Sound can do such a thing? Yes, if you look at it when it explodes, you'll be blinded and you'll hear a deafening sound that, both of these combined will disorient. The thing I was going to use was a special hand grenade called an M84 stun grenade 6, also known as a flashbang. For my basic loadout, I always carry two of these, but until now there hasn't really been a situation where I could use it since every battle had been in the open. This time though, the enemies were in a big room, so I thought I would try using this to see if they would affect monsters. The flashbang is meant to temporarily stun the opponent's sight with the flash and hearing with the bang, which is around 175 decibels. Because of the MMO's PvP headgear such as head googles and earpads, it wouldn't affect the player very much unless their character didn't wear those, but this would be considered PvP or player versus enemy. So of course, they're not wearing any sort of protection for their eyes and ears so that should make it quite effective against them. Ashley and I approached the entrance to the room while I explained the flashbang to her. I could hear a kind of bizarre voice coming from the room and with the entrance to the room on the right side of the pathway, Ashley had to wait behind me as I took cover right next to the entrance way. 1, 2, 3, 11 monsters. Appears that they're all ordinary goblins. In my head, I confirmed the number of monsters that were in the room, 
cross-referencing it with the number of red dots on my map's display. I peeked inside and saw that they all were huddled close to one of the walls, resting. They appeared to be socializing, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. Since I confirmed my targets, I had Ashley cover her ears while I put on my ear pads and took a flashbang from my grenade pouch on my belt. Double checked that Ashley had covered her ears then I pulled the pin from the top of the grenade and threw it into the room aiming for the center of the group of goblins. There were many types of grenades in the MMO, but most of them would explode after around 3 seconds. Bang tilde. I heard it explode and could see a faint flash from the entranceway so I rushed in, quickly taking aim. When the goblins came into sight, some were standing up and some were huddled on the floor but all of them had their hands covered their ears and their eyes closed. The mouths were open like they were screaming, but no voices came out, as I didn't know how long they would be stunned. I pulled the trigger, dispatching them one by one with the P90. Because I was afraid that one would lash out, I kept my distance at the expense of accuracy. Because of that, I spent the 50 rounds in the box magazine and switched to my 5-7 sidearm finishing off the goblins I hadn't killed yet. I've never seen magic like that could that. I felt the air tremble and I still heard the explosion even though I covered my ears. To be able to deal with so many monsters, so quickly, Ashley, who came in after I killed all the goblins, said towards me. One by one the fallen goblins dissipated, leaving behind their mana stones. After I collected all of them I turned to Ashley. Well, it's that I came up with a plan of attack as soon as I had enough information. I simply made small adjustments to my plan of attack to suit the situation I found my enemies in, thus allowing me to do this alone. Well, yes, but please do be careful. Yes, I will. Well, let us go on. With that, we continued on and made our way to the second level. We continued the same plan, detecting the monsters first. Let them come to us and then dispatch them quickly before they can reach us. Thus after finishing up this labyrinth, we walked back to the surface. After today, it would take a while for monsters to respawn so we didn't encounter any more after we cleared it. MTLN Ashes, notes for guns will only be done once, so keep note of them. Note that there are no such things as assault trifles unless referring to the World War II German rifle, long gun, submachine gun, machine gun, and pistol etc. Semi-auto one round per trigger pull, burst, 2,3,4,5 etc. per trigger pull, and automatic, will continue to fire when holding down trigger. Now then it breaks down into details, subcompact, sniper. PDW etc. I'll try and explain, leaving out any political bias. What I'll try and leave you is just details needed to explain the actual firearm. 1. MP5H and K submachine gun PDW, 9mm, 1960s. I haven't had the pleasure to operate one, but have held one in store. They wanted one gate plus for a semi 16 inch barrel model. Fairly light even with a 16 inch barrel. There are pistol variants though, which none of my local stores carry. 2. P90, HN Herstal Bullpup submachine gun, integrated sights, FN 5.7x28mm, 1990s. Bullpup rifles are where the magazine and action are behind the trigger traditionally actions and mag are in front. This allows shortening of the rifle, since where the action can be placed in the stock whereas it would normally just be a solid piece of plastic, wood. Great firearm. Haven't owned one but feels nice to hold. 3. FN57, FN pistol, same caliber as P90, 1990s. Made as the complementing sidearm to the P90. 4. 5.7 by 20 m caliber, round designed from the ground up for the P90 by FN Herstal. 5 iron sights dash. Don't ask why one would remove the reflex sight, which offers better visibility of the target considering they'd have to get an aftermarket rail and irons. Sight is for PS90, different model but close enough. 6 silencer, suppressor, 
originally called silencer in the book, changed to suppressor. Suppressors don't make firearms silence but dampen the sound in the same way a muffler works on a truck. 1. M84 stun grenade, less than lethal, Picatinny Arsenal, 1995. Ashley and I return to Volga. 1. After leaving the Wolf Fang Labyrinth. Meeting up with Mira Maria back at the guild's main hall. Welcome back, Mr. Schwartz, and welcome back to you two as well, Ashley. Hello, Maria too. Since we finished our objective, is the D-rank exam done? So how was the labyrinth exploration for you two? I judged that Mr. Schwartz was able to prepare properly and was able to calmly deal with situations accordingly on the first level. I judged that there is not a problem with advancement to D-rank. Then I will accept Mr. Schwartz's advancement results. Thank you. Now that I had my new D rank, I could start exploring dungeons and thus solving my problem with how to earn CP. 3. With the issue of CP out of the way, I do not have to worry so much about this certainly gives me a lot more breathing room. How I am going to replenish my ammunition and I do not have to worry. Congratulations, Mr. Schwartz. You are free to explore the labyrinth, but please do not push yourself too hard. Let me see your guild card so I can update the rank. The items you find in the labyrinth are yours to keep, but you can sell them here. Thank you both, but I'll be selling the stuff I find to married a trade company who I already know. Eh? You already know them? Yes, I've gotten acquainted with Mr. Malta before so I've been doing business there. Mr. Schwartz. Marida has their headquarters in the kingdom of Kurtmelga Kingdom and Mr. Maltu is the chairman. Chairman of the company? A chubby man who always smiles? 4. There was further talk about the conversation, but I didn't understand. If he's really the chairman, why was he moving alone without escorts to this city? Certainly, someone as high up would use escorts when traveling. I've been frequenting their business and I would never have guessed who he was other than a salesman. Well, I understand and on another note, I'd like to speak with Ashley. Now that you're an official guild investigator, make sure to write your report properly. Maria. With that being said, Ashley protested against Maria with a blushing face and Maria handed me my updated guild card. Underscore adventurer certificate name. Schwartz powder age. 24 Origin, VMB Main Weapon, None Main Magic Attribute, None Skills, None D Rank, 0 3000, Labyrinth Qualified Underscore. The card's display was easy to read, but what shocked me was I needed over 3000 points just to move up to C Rank. However, after thinking it over, I didn't need to rank up to C rank since I already been qualified to enter labyrinths. After saying our farewells to Maria, Ashley and I left the guild and went off to marry the company to sell the mana stones. Once we had left the receptionist desk, I recalled the Ashley being promoted. Ashley, was this exam a promotional test for you as well? Yes. The investigation of Mural Village the other day was supposed to be my promotional exam. But I ended up getting caught by the goblins. Well, then let's celebrate your promotion ending without a hitch this time then. How about we both go to dinner together? Yes, it's definitely good, I can't today, but I have time two days from now. Alright then, I'll be waiting in front of the guild on that day then. It seemed like a lot of the anxiety I had when I fell into this world began to gradually go away after I solved this problem. It may be because since I've gotten here, most of everything had been smoothly resolved with my gear from VMB. My invitation to a very beautiful woman for dinner got accepted as well. With these pleasant thoughts, Ashley and I parted ways with me heading towards Murder Company. Hello. I came to sell some more mana stones. Yes, please hold one while I call for Mr. Malta. When I came into the store, it seems the employee recognized me and I was directed to a guest room and I was served tea. After a few moments, Mr. Malta came in with his signature smile. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Schwartz. Do you like the tea? It's a good tea that been fermenting during the summer. It's very mellow and a deeply rich tea. 
It's quite good today. I'm glad that you like it. I was told that you came to sell some mana stones, correct? Yes. I was recently promoted to D rank and I wanted to sell the stones I got while in the labyrinth and also purchase more nun attribute mana stones. I removed the pouch from my waist and put it in front of Mr. Malta. Mr. Malta took it and pulled out mana stone after mana stone while appraising them. While he did, he was able to ascend what monster and which labyrinth it came from. But that was all. The attributes were basic, but he still bought all of them. We chatted about skills used to identify the stones and its information along with its shortcoming while promising that I'd give preferential treatment to mirror the company and sell my goods here. Since I was here already, I decided to have them prepare a set of tools specifically for exploring labyrinths. Mr. Malta even did me a favor and recommended a restaurant in the city of Baga. The day after my exam, I took a carriage by myself to the Wolf Fang Labyrinth so explore it again. While the carriage rocked back and forth, I was using the avatar customization. After thinking further on everything that happened in the labyrinth the first time, it was apparent that my 5.7 and P90 wouldn't be enough to deal with large groups quickly enough before the status effects wore off. As anyone who played shooters knows, most firearms shoot one bullet at a time. Thus logically, can only deal with one target at a time. What I needed now was something that would deal a killing blow immediately to a good portion of targets when they are in a group. It was a bit of a pain to choose equipment while having to keep the CP in mind. Was the cost to return ratio worth it? And then I have to keep in mind the amount I can reasonably carry. In the avatar outfits, I kept tinkering with my loadout, belt, vest, and other clothing configurations. The end results were that I chose to keep my firearms the same along with keeping the flashbangs, but I also an M67 fragmentation hand grenade 1 and TH3 incendiary grenade, too. I also picked out a powered battlesuit that was form-fitting like underwear but with a rugged design. On top, I wore an M1965 field jacket 3, over the suit and attached a utility belt that had magazine pouches and other stuff. Hello. I'd like to enter the Wolf Fang Labyrinth. After arriving at the labyrinth, I went forward to the management building and I was greeted by a receptionist, using the term loosely. It was a man in full guard gear sitting at the reception desk. Welcome then, please hand over your guild card and fill out your form with all the relevant information. The guard receptionist handed over a form to me as I handed over my guild card. On the form were sections for my name and exploration details such as how many days and floors I was planning on exploring. I filled out the details and put down for the time frame for one day and floors 1 to 5. After I handed the completed form back, my thoughts wandered towards the evolution scale of this world and felt a little uncomfortable with it. The form I filled out was made on paper that I could only compare to washi paper for or traditional Japanese paper by the texture. I haven't seen anything like the modern white paper I'm used to in my original world and even the writing utensil I used was a feather pen. There were flush toilets as well and baths, but just not for the common people. There were also different variations of board games about that I've seen in my world. To be exact, the reason I feel uncomfortable is that I think there may be other people from my world here with such disparities in technology in certain sectors. Well, he's your card back and doesn't push yourself in there by yourself. The most important thing is that coming back alive, he gave me some advice after finding out I was exploring for the first time on my own. I thanked the guard receptionist for his advice. It was a given that recklessly exploring places such as a labyrinth would lead to certain death, but I kept it in the corner of my mind as he was kind enough to say something to me as I felt the building and entered the labyrinth. Heading down into the labyrinth, I pulled out my P90 and 5.7. Their loadout was the same last time with tactical light and suppressor on the P90. The pistol only had a suppressor. However useful these attachments were, 
They added a little bit of weight to the front ends of the weapons making them awkward to hold, but it was something that could be fixed over time as I got used to the weight. Today's plan was to explore the entirety of each floor from B1 to B55, filling in my map of each level. In the VMO game, VMB, maps were a matter of winning or losing. Being able to have the information about the environment the battle would take place in would certainly give the largest advantage in winning. Being able to know the various key positions such as choke points, areas that would make perfect ambush points, and even positions that would make great sniper vantage point would allow you to utilize them way before a team that didn't have that information on hand. That didn't change just because of the labyrinth was an enclosed space, but actually made it a matter of life or death. If you were running away, you wouldn't want to run into a dead end and have your escape cut off. From what's been explained to me, there doesn't seem to be a gimmick such as an instant death trap anywhere within the labyrinth so I can rest easy about moving slowly throughout the labyrinth to check my environment traps. Since I'm by myself, I don't have to worry about anyone else. I can focus on the monsters and lighting up my map. With that, I went on in a good mood. Since I already had a portion of the map filled in from yesterday's exam, so I decided to take another route close to the filled in portion so to fill in the map route by route. Up ahead I could hear something coming from a room on the right side. After posting up it on the wall next to the door frame, I peeked in and saw horned rabbits, in the small room. There were rabbits about 50 cms long with a long horn growing out of their heads and beady glowing red eyes. Fundamentally, the monsters of large rooms won't attack unless you enter the room. But after I stuck my head out, they began to charge at me. So it doesn't apply to small rooms. I took the initiative to strike while there was still distance between us. I trained my iron sights on the front runner's main body then fired in short three round bursts. The sound of damp and gunshots filled the room and hallway as the first horned rabbit tumbled to the floor before sliding and stopping dead, but that didn't phase the other two as they continued charging towards me. I came out from behind the door frame and charged forward before jumping to the left and sliding low. Although there wasn't any clear terminology, in VMB, power would be channeled into the power suit's leg allowing you to slide forward with speed. I called it a jump slide for simplicity. With this, I slide about 4 to 5 meters out. Then I slide to the right while striking the rabbits. Phew! I let out a sigh unconsciously as the last two fallen rabbits were wrapped in a black haze before they slowly faded into the labyrinth's floor leaving only their magic stones. I checked the rest of the room after collecting the stones, but I didn't find anything. It was just an empty room now. In the labyrinth, regardless of the room size, there was a change for magical items to be found, but they were rare. I continued on with mapping the first floor. When I came along any monsters moving my way in the corridors, I would ambush them. For groups that were found in the small or large rooms. I made quick work of them using a combination of flangbangs, fragmentation grenades, and incendiary grenades. I ended up falling into the rhythm by the time I finished mapping the first level before I left for B2. It was similar in the corridor's size with the first level, bringing up the map I got from the guild. It held only a rough layout of the floor leading to the third level, so I continued with my method of mapping, route by route. It seems that the labyrinth would always make five layers in the beginning, but as it devoured more and more lives, it could possibly add another layer. In this labyrinth, there were around five layers that were populated only by goblins, grass wolves and horned rabbits that lived in the nearby eastern forest, but apparently, there was one more monster residing here. Leaving the main corridor, the number of light grass began to slowly decrease. As began to get too dark till eventually, I reached the end of the light grass trail, thus telling me that no one went this way. I stuck my hand into a small cloth bag that was attached to my utility belt. I then pulled out a little seed of light grass then threw it into the darkness ahead. The path ahead wasn't transversed, which meant anything could be down this path. 
To my surprise, a glowing bud sprouted from the seed in the darkness at a visible pace before my eyes, first a stem and then within a few minutes, it began a fully matured white flower glowering in the darkness, illuminating its surroundings. The best way I could describe it is like those time-lapse videos where they show the plant growing all the way till it's mature. It was such a moving scene that I let out a small voice of surprise, but it didn't last long. In the distance, the sound of heavy footsteps and rough breathing reached my ears. It didn't match the sound of the other monsters I found here, but there was a possibility of another monster, one that I heard them mention, but not really confirm. A red bear. 1. M67 Fragmentation Grenade. A thrown explosive that when on detonation, sends shrapnel in all directions. 2 and slash M14TH3 incendiary grenade. A despite popular belief and how it's portrayed in video games, the TH3 is a support item used in the case to destroy materials by melting it with thermite. Think really, really hot plasma torch. End result of the deployment of the M14 is molten iron. It can even melt through an engine block. 3. M1965 Field Jacket, military jacket made for cold weather, now a very hipster jacket, which I'm guilty, of owning. 4. Washi Paper or Traditional Japanese Paper, original it just said Japanese Paper, and we all know how I get when authors just try to explain things such as because I'm Japanese, or Japanese blah blah. I think because they're Japanese. They should explain themselves better, how bowed at. 5. B. Insert number. Basement floor level. Think of the number system A in a tower 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it would go as 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 6 minus 7 minus 8 minus 9 minus 10. Zero being ground level. After the light flower bloomed, I could hear heavy footsteps ahead of me. Neither goblins or grass wolves were heavy enough to have such steps, leaving the only possibility a red bear. That guess, unfortunately, was right. A large monster with large red eyes slowly stepped out of the shadows, its large body and flame red fur stared at me. It didn't look like it was going to attack yet but it had me in its sights. A threatening snarl appeared on the bear's face, but the bear was already in my attack range. Quickly, I went down to one knee while readying my weapon, taking the initiative to attack first. With my sights trained on the bear, I fired the P-90. The bear, as if knowing what was going to happen, turned its head to the right and the bullets made contact with the left side of its face. Even though it tried to protect itself slightly, I managed to take out its left eye. The bear let out a deep roar in a mix of pain and rage as blood began to gush out of its obliterated eye, its roar echoing through the hall before charging at me. Grap. Its speed was faster than I thought it would be, but before he reached me, I ran towards the right wall of the hall. Just like in VMB, I wall ran over the charging red bear. Vu -oh 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 -oh. The bear, blinded by rage, tried to change course to catch me, but only ended up crashing into the wall. I landed behind the bear with the help of the powered suit, taking advantage of the bear's mistake and I unleashed a rain of fire onto its rear end, managing to disable its hind legs. It didn't let out a roar of anger but more of a cry of pain this time as its legs buckled, its red half crashing into the floor under all its weight. I didn't give it a chance to catch its breath though as I ran up to it and jumped onto its back, landing just behind its head. I pressed the suppressor attached to the P90 to the neck area just behind its skull and held down the trigger. I emptied the rest of my magazine into the back of the red bear's head and for a moment the only sound in the hall was that of the spent casings falling and rolling. Then as if a spell released the bear, its body fell straight down with a loud thud then fading away, dropping me onto the ground. I had some grievances in my heart there, I didn't actually know if that would work like it did in VMB. 
but it did. I kept those thoughts to myself though as I picked up the Red Bear Stone, as I replaced the Spen magazine in the P90, I heard the familiar heavy footsteps coming from in the dark again, on the map it actually showed two bears, I could feel from the steps that they were rushing my way, their spend was way faster than I thought there even could be a possibility of a monster that was faster than my reaction speed and could kill me the moment I met them, but I quickly clear these thoughts from my head as I had two monsters heading my way and I only had a few moments to set a trap before they could reach here. I summoned the supple Lee box with M18 Claymore, one, landmines in it, in front of me. Light particles instantly converged and formed a box that held the Claymore mines in it. I quickly got to work and set one up in the center of the corridor. These Claymores were one directional use anti-personnel mines used by the United States of America military and they were box shaped with a slight curve with a width of less than 20 cms. On detonation, it unleashes as many as 700 iron balls that are held inside in a fan shape. That said, it's rumored that the real thing can even reach up to 250 meters, but in VMB, we didn't really have distances like that. In the labyrinth was a different story though. It should be enough to cripple or even kill the enemy's feet and stop them from escaping. The mine had two ways of detonation by wire or remote control by a handheld trigger. Unfortunately, VMB's claymores could only be detonated by remote control. Even so, I would have reservations about setting a wired trap since anything could set it off and I didn't get unknowing adventurers in the mix. Done. I installed the claymore and stayed back a little bit to wait for them. The sounds of the heavy footsteps because louder, shaking the floor slightly in the game. Waiting behind your trap was actually quite dangerous because once it went off, everyone within earshot would be alerted, but it had its pros and cons. Suddenly, the footsteps got quicker and quicker. Did they detect me? Smell. In that case, I readied myself for a fight. The footsteps got closer and closer until two bears plunged out of the darkness at breakneck speeds. Click. The detonation trigger was squeezed. The claymore exploded almost instantly and shook the entire hallway sending dust everywhere, obstructing my view. Crap. There was never any dust that would roll up in VMB. Dust lingered in the air making it almost impossible to see the bears so I quickly turned my heads up display to thermovision. Two giant bodies of red and yellow appeared in my eyepiece, the chest areas were burning a deep red, possibly because that was where the mana stones were located. The two bears faces were covered in blood and so was their front legs. They had couldn't move at the moment due to shock from their injuries and the explosion. Without giving them a moment to catch their breath, I lined the first bear's head in my crosshairs and squeezed the trigger. Deep red floors bloomed in the thermo site, my gas from the blood splatter before it slowly began to cool off as the bear dropped down. I then quickly switched to the other bear and finished that one off in the same fashion. Afterward, both the bears laid lifeless on the floor. But then a dark fog began to wrap around them before their bodies began to sink into the labyrinth leaving only the mana stone in their places. I picked those stones up, but sadly they weren't attributeless. They were red as fire. I took out some of the mana stones in my pouch and found that the attributeless had no head signature. The wind was slightly red and the bluish had a slight signature. This was interesting information and after looking over the stones for a while, I placed them all back in my pouch and finished up with mapping the second floor before heading down to the third floor to map it. 1.M18A1 Claymore Anti-Personnel Directional Mines, activated by either remote or wire, fires metal balls in a one direction against personnel, but can be used against unarmored vehicles as well. The range is 110 yards. I dived down into the third floor of the labyrinth. Following the same procedure I did above, I left the map path that headed down towards the fourth floor. After studying the map ahead of time, I found there was a room called Spring of Purity which was the only safe zone in the labyrinth on the third floor. In this world, a labyrinth attracts monsters into them to use as their life force. 
Despite this attraction, it had a restroom where the monsters couldn't enter. I wondered why it had such a thing. But there is an old tale that labyrinths were created by an ancient evil spirit. Apparently, the reason was to destroy all the living races above ground. Although the tale doesn't say why the demon wanted to do such a thing. Even why such an entity that wishes to destroy all living beings, a being against God, would have a thing such a safe room in its trap. Many labyrinthologist has also given up on this point. Maybe there was a reason somewhere but was lost to time. Even in the end though. The labyrinth constantly supplies mana stones and if you manage to conquer it, you'd get a large dungeon core. With these thoughts, I headed towards the safe room while making contact with several monsters along the way. That was the plan, but, oddly, I feel a little hungry, but I don't feel tired. I've been running around and fighting since I got here though. It started to nip at the edge of my mind about why I haven't been getting tired. What is going on with my body? Was it that so-called cheat ability you get for going to another world or was it a unique skill? Out of curiosity, I pulled out my combat knife that was attached to my right leg. I hesitated for a moment before I took the knife and made a small cut across my fingertips. Crimson blood overflowed from the cut, swelled up and began to drizzle down my hand. I feel the pain and I bleed. However, the blood stopped flowing. I put one of the fingers that had blood on it in my mouth. When I did, I tasted the expected iron taste of blood. I was slightly relieved that it was actually blood and not something else. Staring at the wound, I noticed something. The wound is closing itself. The laceration I made with the knife healed itself, not even leaving a scar in its place. If I hadn't done it at myself and watched it, I wouldn't have ever believed I cut it. I didn't speak about it anymore. This body isn't my original body and even then, I couldn't call this body human. I felt a sickening feeling in the pit of my stomach and my legs began to tremble. Then my one of my legs gave out, leaving me kneeling on the floor. I couldn't feel fatigue and my body had the quick regenerative ability. It wasn't a cheat ability or a skill. Neither was it something I acquired the moment I was transported into this world. It was simply this body, not limited to just VMB. In most basic FPS games, your character would auto-regenerate health over time. Granted there was hardcore, which one you couldn't recover health, but that wasn't the base setting. Players never run out of stamina, your arms and legs couldn't be amputated. Health lost from taking hits and falls would eventually recover so long as you didn't die. VMB had a lot of things going in it such as acrobatics, precision shooting, and even large-scale fights. In order for all this to happen, the game never implemented stamina stats so players to dash and jump as much as they wanted. Even now that I'm in this world, the character parameters are still the same. Thinking about it. I never had a date with someone in years, but if I can't return to my own world, I may end up settling down here and try to start a family. But now another question was, could I even produce offspring with this body? Could I even have sex? In the first place, I didn't even understand how I'm even still alive. While I was distracted by all this revelation and the shock of it, a goblin had come upon me, seeing me kneeling. It thought I was but weak prey. The club in its hand was raised and then swung down at me with a cry. Kyra, the club made contact with my CPS or circle barrier shield and from the bottom. I thrusted the muscle of the P90 into its unprotected belly before squeezing the trigger. It died quickly after that and fell to the floor. I watched the face of the goblin as it faded into the labyrinth leaving behind a single mana stone. I honestly was startled. I had to stop thinking. Undoubtedly, whatever this body was, I was alive. I felt hunger, I felt sleepy at night and I felt pain. I was still living and breathing, logically thinking. It was a convenient trait to have. I cleared my mind and continued on towards the safe room. Entering the safe room, I noticed it was quite small, only 6 meters by 6 meters. Even then, it still had a different atmosphere from the rest of the labyrinth so far. In the center of the room was a small spring that kept boiling up. This was the fountain of purity. 
There wasn't a single light flower growing anywhere in the room, but it was still well lit. In my original plan, I should have arrived here by the afternoon, but I already passed that. Each level was wider than the previous one, which I didn't expect. It took much more time to map out the floor completely. With that, I had to alter my plans a little so that's why I decided to come here. I guess I should get some camping equipment. Although I didn't build up fatigue while fighting, I don't believe I'd be immune to sleep. If I didn't sleep, it'd affect me drastically, causing my aim to be off and eventually, that would cause a fatal misstep. Calculating the number of floors, which was 26. There was a transfer gate every tenth floor. Each gate needed its defender killed with its blood and a little bit of magic to activate it. Since I couldn't use magic, that meant I wouldn't be able to use those gates. Thus I would be even longer and would need to pack accordingly. There's also the fact that the 25th floor boss hasn't reigned undefeated, so no one knows how much further the labyrinth expanded. If it did that is, it's said that when a new floor has been added, you could feel the vibrations, but so far no one could confirm if it's happened or not. Wouldn't that mean it's impossible for me? No. I felt a desire to conquer this dungeon like it was calling out to be, sparking something in me. I felt like I've finally found a purpose, a clear goal if you will. With the power I gained in VMB, I could clear this labyrinth for a normal human. It'd be suicidal, but not for me. With this resilience, I could conquer it. I sat down by the edge of the spring, staring at its rippling water that kept coming up. I spent about an hour or so in silence, thinking about all of it. After that, I decided to set aside the labyrinth for now. Getting up, I turned back the way I came and decided to return to the city. Returning to the inn, I didn't bother to change out of my combat gear and just fell into bed with it all on. I had a date with Ashley for dinner tomorrow night, so it'd be nice if I had a set of this world's clothes, but it just left me in a weird mood thinking more. I only ended up going to bed feeling a little sick. The next morning, the inn's maid had woke up before the bath service. I took my bath and debt breakfast. After breakfast, I returned back to my room and decided to test out a concern I had for a while now. No question that the TSS system came with me when I fell into this world, with the only change being how I gained the currency. Though it took me a while to figure out the conversion, it ended up working out in the end. But that wasn't just the only function for the TSS. It also had an inventory section in the beginning. It didn't have much space to store items. But investing a small amount of real world money I was able to expand it. As a note, it didn't have a limit. As such, I had plenty of items stored away. With that in mind, the concern was, could I store items from this world in it? I held a wooden cup in my hand and dropped it on the inventory screen. Instead of being absorbed in, it only fell through it to the floor. Right. It would be great if I could store items from this world into it. Disappointed, I tried the other sections of the TSS screen such as the top menu, mail, and news. None of them accepted the cup. Even after changing the function of the currency system to accept magic stones, you can't even accept a little cup. Currently, it seemed impossible for me to put items from this world directly into the inventory. Changing pace. I went back into the TSS and entered the shop tab. I began to look at fashionable items that I could wear out with Ashley tomorrow night. They say that it wouldn't snow in winter in this town. Even then, it's still going to be cold so I want to get a thick coat or something similar in case. Although I have this coat, there was plenty of clothes in the shop, making me want to try them all out. While I was selecting items to buy. Something popped up that caught my eye. Gift box. It was an icon to put said item into for giving it to other players. By attaching the gift box, it was possible to gift other players. Another interesting part was that the box actually appeared in the virtual space, allowing multiple people to put items into the box. Having an idea, I picked the gift box and finished my shopping. Afterward, 
I summoned the gift box onto the inn's floor. Particles of light gathered in front of me, glowing brighter as it converged into a single point forming pink gift wrapping paper. Well, the design is a little, but the gift box still comes out. The gift box was a rectangular box about 150 centimeters by 90 centimeters x 60. If you pushed the button on the side, the lid would automatically open up. Inside the box was like an endless void, almost like there was a different space inside. Moving on to the experiment, I placed the 5.7 inside. The catalog screen on the back side of the lid came up, displaying the 5.7. So far it was like in VMB, moving on to the next part. I tried inserting the cup into the gift box, I stared intently at the catalog. Instead of cup, it was displayed as unknown. Well, I guess it's to be expected if you put an item that wasn't in VMB inside. However, it was possible to rename the items in the box so I tapped the name on the list and renamed it to wooden cup. I was also able to pull it back out. Huh so I can pull it back out too. I then put it back in and found that it displayed the name I had put in on the catalog screen. It seemed that the name was saved properly in the TSS. Next, I closed the lid and placed the gift box into my inventory. The box disappeared into light particles. I then resummoned it and opened the lid. Inside was my 5.7 and the wooden cup. Phew, it's a bit inconvenient but it's still a solution to my problem. I took out the items, placing the 5.7 back into the holster and the wooden cup on the table. VMB's system regarding gift boxes is like a miniature item box. You can buy any items and then put them inside the box then you could send it to another player. You could also just leave it in your inventory. By the time I noticed. It was about noon on the day I promised to go to dinner with Ashley. Before I went to pick her up, I stopped my Marida's trade company to pick up equipment. Since I didn't have to worry about carrying equipment now in regards to the amount and size. Since items can be stored inside the gift boxes, I can just properly prepare things I'd need. Hello, welcome back, Mr. Dot Schwartz. Greeting the employees, which have become more familiar with me. I for Mr. Malto and went into the, back towards the usual room. Since this was a fortified city, with a nearby labyrinth, there were plenty of weapon shops, supply stores, and others. Even so, I've only ever used married a trading company after I met Mr. Malta. Well, it's not too big of a deal. I get to drink delicious tea every time I come by. As I thought this, an employee brought in tea for me. It was a dark green tea that was sweet and savory. Do you like today's tea? It's high quality leaves that have been carefully steamed. Mr. Malta came into the room while saying that. His large round belly shook as he smiled. The scent is pretty good. So did you come to sell some mana stones? It's fine if you just came by to drink some tea. Well that too, but I also came to buy camping equipment. R. Yes, I have all the necessary tools and I even got a water bottle that can replenish its water with a magic stone. It just arrived from the kingdom. Food and water are necessities that one must have when exploring a labyrinth. They're also the more important expendable items. You have to have meals and you have to drink to keep your body healthy, so you need to have a good amount. However, for me who couldn't use magic, meant I couldn't use a tool bag, so that meant I had to prepare special order equipment like a water bottle that can automatically fill itself. By using water attribute mana stones, they were popular with adventurers but had to be special ordered from the capital. I sold the mana stores I gained from yesterday's labyrinth exploration, then used it to pay for some equipment right now, but kept it tame. I had to hold on to some money to pay for the dinner date tonight, so that it would have to wait for another time. When the equipment was brought, I asked Mr. Malta to dismiss the other employees in the room and when they left, I took out the gift box in the room. Is this Mr. Dot Schwartz tool bag? Yeah. There's another name for it though. For now, let's just call it a toolbox. Where did it come from? Please just think of it as a skill. I'm surprised. 
How much does this toolbox hold by the way? Well, there are 30 slots. Ignoring size, it can hold one item per slot. Each slot can hold 99 of the same items. What? That's too much for such a little box. On top of all that, I could have multiple gift boxes. So I technically have an infinite item storage. Mr. Melter had listened to my explanation with the sharp eyes of a merchant. I was told Mr. Malta possessed a high pedigree for a merchant, his skills allowing him to read between the lines. However, that was just Mr. Malta, I refused to deal with anyone else. Mr. Schwartz, you are still a D-rank, right? R, yes. I'm going to be focusing on the labyrinth in the future, so I don't think I'll be taking on much work as an adventurer. Ranking up would probably be far in the future. That's a shame. When you become a C rank, you can get nominated requests. Those are requests where someone can request a particular adventurer. With your toolbox, I definitely would have liked to nominate you. Ah, such a convenient box. You wouldn't have to worry about the weight or quantity of the delivery. You'd also be targeted less. If you ever rank up, please let us know. We'd definitely love to cooperate with you in the future regarding transporting goods. Well, if the opportunity presents itself. Having given my answer, Mr. Malta kept his wolfish eyes on my toolbox until it disappeared into light particles. At the largest tower in the city, there's a large bell that rang out three times a day. Morning noon and evening. Our dinner date was promised for the evening bell. So I ended up waiting in front of the general guild just before the evening bell rang out. Having waited for about 30 minutes, the evening bell rang out across the city. The time on his HUD displayed 1700 hours. Watching the flow of people in and out of the guild, it seemed that human beings were common, but there were other races as well. I wondered if I could live in a world had so many different races such as fey like elves and dwarfs and others. While contemplating such a thing, I saw Ashley's blonde hair shining beautifully in the sunlight as she stepped out of the guild. Did I keep you waiting? Ashley's tone was chipper than usual. While taking my eyes off her hair, I responded in the same tone. Nope let's go eat. Okay, but where are we going? As soon as the evening bell rings, almost every shop gets crowded. I asked Mr. Malta for a recommendation to a shop with good food. I made reservations, just before coming, that said. Ashley and I walked together off to eat, hello more more clan. We hope that each and every one of you is enjoying the collection of audiobooks available here. If you just want to support me or have a particular novel in mind that you'd like to request please kindly click on the provided links below. Once again thank you more more clan.